Engage. On screen. On screen. What the hell is going on? Engage. I want all the power you can give me. I'm not sure I have a specific recommendation. Not good enough, damn it! Not good enough! Any idea of what it is or where it came from? I'm not sure I have a specific recommendation. This is no longer amusing. They seem normal enough. I shouldn't be so confident. Make it so. I would rather outthink them than outfight them. Engage! On screen. Let's investigate. Enlarge and identify. I shouldn't be so confident.
I Shut love honor! Face. I Shut. demand Shut. honor! Engage! I'm not sure I have a specific recommendation. I want all the power you can give me. Hello, computer. Strange. Slow to impulse speed. Stay calm, everyone. What the hell is going on? I'm not sure I have a specific recommendation. Stay calm, everyone. Let's investigate. It's a fake. This is no longer amusing. Macro head. Stay calm, everyone. Slow to impulse speed. I would rather outthink them than outfight them. Engage! Slow to impulse speed. Strange. Slow to impulse speed. Not good enough, damn it! Not good enough! They seem normal enough.
I'm not sure I have a specific recommendation. I'm Captain Picard. Engage. Move to intercept. Excuse Wrap it up, me. nerd. Still, uh... Right, I don't know what this is called, and I don't care. Two, three, four. Welcome, welcome. Uh oh, uh oh, playing wrong videos. Oh no, there it is. Right, welcome, guys. <laughs> I took you back. <laughs> welcome everyone to the Chill Out Trek Show. Where we... With me, audience, professional. That should, that should be a trigger. I'm going to get every time you said professionalism and just do it into one master card. Yes, welcome everyone to the Chilled Out Trek Show, where we sit and talk nonsense for however long it is before we get bored. <laughs> Gentlemen, how are we? <laughs> it's been a long day. Making it. Yeah, that's incredible that you made a, a lower decks intro just for this episode. It's like you knew what we were going to talk about. See, yeah. that's my forward yeah. thinking I knew all along. And yet, do you know why I knew all along? I love honor. I demand honor. <laughs> I'm going to be playing that all night because lower decks is in timelines. I know we don't talk about timelines here, but lower decks is in timelines. It's coming. Badgie is there. We we have to, we have to talk timelines today. It sneaks in there every do. day. Yeah. Come on, it's, it's fine. We can talk about everything. It's well, fine. and Wednesday... Yeah. <laughs> so the news dropped, and Idol's like, hey, let's do Timeline Socks instead. And we're like, no, we have to put our foot down yeah, this yeah, time. Yeah. We're, we're taking a week <laughs> off, so if you want to talk about it on, on tomorrow, we can do that So Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, like, I, Idol was like, hey, do you want to dump on my... And I'm like, Idol, it's been six <laughs> goddamn months. You can't just drop Armada the instant something happens in timelines. That's worked every other time, but no, okay, fine, fine. We'll finish our board campaign. Never mind, we're getting fucking badgy. We need to talk about... I want to play Elite Force and Legacy true, yeah. sometime this year. Okay, Please. okay. <laughs> well, then talk about it now, Idol. Let's do it. Lower Decks yes. is coming. Lower Decks is coming to Timeline. Lower Decks is coming to everything. I think Fleet Command also announced they're getting um, uh, Lower Decks ships in it. I don't know how Fleet Command works. And Star Trek Online has come up saying they've got the Cerritos as added to the roster of ships coming soon as well. So it looks like that those doors to open the license just went boom everywhere. So yes, everyone's getting Lower Decks whether you like it or not, which is an interesting so, conversation. One of my thoughts yeah. on that was that because some other games did get lower deck stuff, I thought, yeah, I wonder if um, Tilting Point is being a little bit cheapo here. Like maybe they're not investing that hard in the future. But the fact that multiple games announce stuff on the same day mm. makes me think, okay, it was on, it was on the, the yeah. license holders and not not on. Lower Decks has been a funny Tilting one for that said. because even when it first, when season one first came out, there was no international distribution. There was like no way of seeing it in the UK or Europe or anywhere like that. There was no like Eagle Moss was saying we haven't got the license of the models yet. Everything was very restrictive about how things were working out. And I think now they've worked out a lot more international distribution. And I think that was because like you play a game I, like timelines which is worldwide i think obviously they don't want to be able to say well only people in the u.s can see this worldwide content so i think that that was that was where i think the hinge was of all do yeah. you think <clears throat> that they weren't convinced lower decks was going to be successful so they didn't have Maybe. all the stuff ready to go because like, it feels yeah. weird doesn't it that picard ready instantly 
um, Discovery yeah. pretty much like ready from the get get go. Every other show pretty much like straight through. Like yeah. they announced Strange New Worlds incidentally in the same announcement. I was like, oh, I didn't even realize that was like a thing they had yeah. to negotiate. I figured that would just be bundled in with Discovery. But oh yeah, I guess it is a different license. But Lower Decks just like it feels almost as if like they were like, eh, let's put this out, see how people react. Mm. Then everyone pretty much was unilaterally, I like this. Yeah, it's the Guardians like, of the Galaxy oh, of, of, oh. of Star Trek, isn't it? It's, it's the, the project they put out and went, who are these fuckheads? And then they actually went, yeah, well, yeah brilliant. Well, and then, you know, the, the gears of the behind the scenes stuff, legal and rights mm. and stuff like that, those, those, those turn slowly. You have to get those approved in advance if you're going to have them be timely so i can i can understand that you know if they didn't well and just the tone is so wildly different from anything else in star trek it's like having that mesh with the rest of your properties it's it's not it's not an automatic fit it's not something that it just everybody would see and say oh yes that that makes sense let's have this be part of everything else because it's kind of the family guyization of star trek and mm. it's like people can that can be an acquired taste so you don't necessarily want to put that on it everybody is, right away unless the interest yeah, is very it, clear it's very adult as well you know it's, it sort of it pushes that rick and morty fold partly because of the writers on it but it, the other interesting conversation yeah. speaking of rights as well is with a lot of people asking about prodigy and i think shan came out on the forums and said no we're not getting prodigy uh the star trek on and with no real explanation but i think I was talk, talking with this well i wasn't talking with the star trek online developers but someone else was um they were talking about prodigy and getting the proto star in in the roster of the star trek online ships and the characters as duty officers things like that and they're saying probably not partly because Star Trek Online, Timelines, all these mobile games have gambling aspects and pay-to-win aspects and, uh, you know, uh, things they don't want children seeing. And with uh, Prodigy being PG-13 or even less than that, you know, it is, it is aimed at children, they won't extend that license to games that would, uh, ha you know, prey on that. I love so honor! You I demand honor! <laughs> You don't Thanks. want kids using slot machines? I mean, where's your where's your sense of adventure? Yeah, I, that's where I, most I of their income comes from. When I play Pokemon Red and Blue and they have slot machines in the game quarter, god damn it! And so <laughs> now you've got Voltorb <laughs> Flip and it's like, what the hell? Yes, See, that was the only way to get Porygon. You know, you had to get uh, all those Celadon oh, yeah. City. Like, damn right. I've been running on that for ages. <laughs> I wonder where my gambling addiction came from. Anyway, um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm not too um, with. with uh, Prodigy, it's a bit of a shame because Idol, you've seen Prodigy, yes. I have not. Um, okay. You have seen Clone Wars also, which I feel like you yes. mentioned was a pretty decent sort of reference point. Yeah. I have been re watching Clone Wars with a friend of mine, and that gets pretty dark at points. Yeah. There are straight up like neck snaps and like war <laughs> okay. crimes it's going on. It's not that on. dark, I would say. It's not as brutal. I mean, I mean, Clone Wars is about war, so, but I'd say in terms yeah. of the storyline content and how they approach the characters i would say is more relevant than the actual maybe violence in, in third do they drug okay. a hooker carry her body through town throw it on a slab <laughs> collect a briefcase full of cash and walk out i mean we haven't finished not yet we haven't seen all the episodes yet because i think it's the rest of season one's come, gonna happen so you know dal could certainly do that some dal and gwyn could certainly travel back to carpenter street during there you know it could happen okay. <laughs> and then then go order a burger and fries afterwards yeah but yeah well look, it, look. it's i i i think it's more it's like idol is saying it's it's the game being uh, offensive is the wrong word towards kids than yeah. the other way around. Yeah, it's not appropriate. Yeah. Not yeah. appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. You can't fire me, I quit. Well, actually, we didn't want our stuff in your game, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which opens the door. Well, I mean, I that's, to... <clears throat> I, that's I mean, I fine because we got Discovery Timely, we got Picard Timely, yeah. we got uh, Strange New Worlds Timely, and now after a relatively short break we're getting lower decks yeah. too so there you go yeah it's two years later yeah, sorry and that's well and that's not a thing that may necessarily persist forever they they may decide later on to revisit that if it mm. prodigy hangs around long enough and you know those things become big enough they they may i mean it's they may already got a hell of a it, star it's, it's got almost lower decks -ex style star everyone that's watched it is not universally mm -hmm. agreeing and obviously people won't watch will will buffer the fact that it is a kid's show but um most people that have watched it 
do do like it. And they're even getting their own game. There is a, a, a the glory days of Star Trek games where there is an actual prodigy game. There are two games coming out now. There's Resurgence and oh, there's yes. Prodigy one. Yeah. Like, even if they're kind of bad, I'm like, <laughs> there are actual video games I can go and buy out that I don't have to spend twenty five pounds a month on a campaign yeah. track on. I'm kind of well, excited about the idea to be able to go. Okay. I would like to buy one video game, please, and then I receive would, a video if game. If you were to make right, so so there's going to be Resurgence, which is essentially going to be uh, a TNG Tell kind of game, a film a film game, sort of essentially in the, the yeah. TNG era. Um, Prodigy, the game, obviously saying Prodigy. If you were to make a lower decks game, what kind of game would you want to play with the lower decks characters? Ignoring the mobile game that's coming out, TBD. I have a few Metal thoughts. Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> <laughs> with uh, I Boimler, it, Boimler as a uh, snake. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. Um, my first thought is like a Streets of Rage style beat em yes. up, like side scrolling. Um, I think that would work. Yeah. Um, yeah. The other one I could see is: Has anyone here played um, Tales from the Borderlands by Telltale Games? Is that similar to what Resurgence will be? It, it's similar to like Walking Dead, kinda, yeah. but way funnier. Like there is a five-minute segment in oh, wow. Tales from the Borderlands where you have a massive like gunfight with finger guns. Like everyone is just like it's like everyone is like just finger gunning, and it's like super dramatic, and people are just like going, da, 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 and it's just like played completely straight. Mm-hmm. for five minutes yeah. and like that kind of tone but lower decks i feel like would translate perfectly or, you know maybe like an an update Ooh. of like an old uh sierra kind of game like a monkey island or Ooh, you know that kind of thing that'd be good fun uh, a but, good adventure game yeah yeah, yeah I'm we into may that. have yeah. bear bear with me we may have a surprise guest coming on in a second because Ben has Whose music been, do I hear? Uh, you may hear if I can find his bloody thing on here. <laughs> ben, I can join and show you guys the demo. I can't find his bloody username now. <laughs> <laughs> Bear with me. Surprise. I thought this wasn't going to be a timeline show. <laughs> apparently, apparently, apparently it is. Hang you're on, getting on. my time, your timelines in my chill stream. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Sorry, ca- carry on talking. I'll negotiate. <laughs> yeah. Like, lower decks, you could do almost anything with that kind of... Like, the only thing oh, like, you could, wouldn't be able to do is, like, a, a first-person shooter. I feel like that's a... Like, Elite Force managed to do a first-person shooter fine, but I don't feel like it's appropriate for Star Trek otherwise. I, I kind of don't care what kind of game, as long as they do it well. How yes. many yes. bad yeah. Star Trek games have we had? Most of them. So that's the uh, <laughs> that's the worry about Resurgence is it's going to be a walking simulator. And my we're looking at looking at Prodigy, the game. It's sort of looking at the developer, what else they've done. Very much like Peppa Pig games. Um, like uh, thinking, oh hello, Ooh. we've got we've got a surprise, a surprise <laughs> drop, live from Chicago. Oh, boy. Hey, oh look who it is. <laughs> There it is. Oh, wow. Hey, let me, let me show you the booth. Hold on a second. Oh, wow. Oh, boy. <laughs> Are we the booth girls? <laughs> <laughs> it's my first Star Trek convention. I'm, I'm technically there. <laughs> it's it's hard to argue otherwise. Hey, here we go. Oh, boy. Right, uh, here. So we got, we got Ben's phone. Codes. Oh, wow. Ooh. So we got that QR thing. code. And my, yeah. and my, <laughs> my favorite part right here, guys. Look at that! Nice. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Hey. Oh, and uh, and uh, how do you guys like that announcement? Yeah, loved it. <laughs> we were just talking about it. Yeah. Yeah, we were. Yeah, yeah we are. We are very, very excited. Um, can, can you guys hear me? Okay. See me? Yeah, okay? Cool. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna right. cool. yeah, You're good. Awesome. So I, I figured uh, this was not planned at all. I just saw, saw your notification. You went live, and I was like. Nice. They probably like to see some stuff because you guys aren't here. But oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, fleet boss battles. Uh, I know you guys have seen the kind of trailer video and um, kind of give you a rundown of that very quickly. Sure. I like, do it. I like how I'm craning my neck as if that will get me a better view. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing exactly that also. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the uh, yeah. So fleet boss battles. Let's take a look here. Uh, so okay. we've moved the HUD around just a little bit more. Uh, I might change a little more before, uh, I don't know, auto. <laughs> you're like, yes, more change. More, more Everyone menus, loves please. It. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, right now we just, we moved the scan button over here. So it's, you know, uh, which kind of makes sense. Cause anyways, but 
The uh, fleet boss battles, you know, we have we have down here on the main HUD now. Um, okay. And we have the Doomsday Machine that we're taking down, and we have a bunch of different difficulties from uh, easy, mm. normal, hard. Oh, uh, I love the way the art progresses. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's good great. stuff. So, uh, start another another brutal. Um, obviously, we're still working on balance and, and uh, you know making sure things run run smoothly, but. Um, well, let me just do an attack, uh, you know, a battle row first. And it's very similar, you know, it's the same as, as, as ship battles. Um, but it's going to take, you know, th these ships have a ton of health. Um, I'm just going to speed it up and put auto on, and you can see, uh, you know, it's going to take a while. Right now, there's a bug where the ship's not really doing much damage to you, but you can see how little damage is actually being done yeah, okay. by your ship. Um, so mm -hmm. basically, Long story short, it is like a raid system. It's kind of, you're like setting up. You're setting up a a raid on on this on this boss ship, um, and you're getting uh, you know, these resources back, and you're getting scrap back. That then then you can turn into um, put into the captain's bridge, which is another new feature. Um, he's slowly slowly building uh, and leveling up a captain's bridge um, by you know taking your scrap that you've gotten in battle. And uh, putting them into different buffs, uh, and it's the first time we'll actually have buffs for different ships and different ship abilities. So, huh. um, you know, like you'll be able to upgrade your uh, accuracy, your evasion, uh, you know, your damage output, uh, and even your shield regen, um, and other things like that. Uh, and it's not just focused on uh, ships either. You'll be able to increase buffs of, of skills as well. Uh, for cool. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, and uh, and slowly, as you kind of put resources in and level up these buffs, you'll upgrade the captain's bridge um, from level to level. And just to give you an idea, let me go back here to the live game. Not live, but demo. Uh, we put the captain's bridge into the, the manifest foldout. And this is what it's probably going to look like at the start. Obviously, not with the blue, not with the blue uh, you know, the, the mannequins. But, <laughs> oh, I like it. Um, I like it. <laughs> but so, <laughs> at the start, it's a, you know, we have a 3D scene here and, um, you know, there's no panels or no lights going on in the background. There's nothing shining or twinkling. But as you go and upgrade, uh, you know, as you go and upgrade your, your, your buffs and, and, and upgrade the level of your ship, uh, you, you know, certain things will come into focus and the lights will start, you know, the panels will start mm -hmm. to come into focus and things will start moving, like twinkling and moving around and, and you're coming out, you're building a captain's bridge over time. Eventually, you know, you'll have a bunch of crew that come in um, and everything will kind of be fleshed out. Uh, over time. Wow. And so, and so there's that. Uh, and now for the, the gameplay portion of, uh, and this is not currently in the demo, this part, but let me get the clarity. Right? Um, so this is uh, one of our concepts currently. Uh, so within a, a fleet boss battle, you have these different nodes. You have multiple nodes. Um, in each node, depending on difficulty, there'll be a range from one to, I think, three um, different traits that are all hidden from the start. They're not like the, the regular hidden traits in that way, but they're just traits that aren't visible to the player. Right? Um, but as you go through and use different crew within the battle, uh, you would, you know, satisfy one of these one of these traits, and you know. The, what we want to happen is that the you know, investigator will kind of pop in as players, if a player uses an investigator crew or a crew with investigator trait, investigator will come in and there'll be two other, you know, question marks here. And so you'll go back to your fleet and say, hey, I used, I, you know, I unlocked investigator for node two. Like, does anyone else have any investigators that have other traits as well that we think? And there's a list of possible traits down here at the bottom as well. So, um, so you'll be able to kind of click on these and, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, tailor or, or kind of uh, focus on certain crew that have, you know, I can click investigator and culture breaker and figure out, you know, um, like what other traits uh, or the crew, what other crew have those traits. Um, and so in this feature, we're really leaning into leveraging crew depth as well. Um, mm. And so, you know, you'll have to be using specific, um, uh, you know, uh, using different traits and using specific crew in order to kind of whittle it down and kind of whittle, whittling it down. Uh, with the rest of your fleet as well. Um, and then the last bit of stuff is by completing all these different nodes, uh, your fleet will be able to do a, a massive, you know, boss, you know, massive mega attack on the boss. Uh, 
mm-hmm. and you know do do a bunch of damage there. Uh, but long story short, it's it's kind of like our version on, on like, like a raid system. Right. Hmm. So for the yeah. ship battle parts, is it is it everyone in your fleet gets one ship uh, to attack, or do you use multiple of your own ships? You use one one of your own ship to attack. Okay. Um, yeah, we we we're still f- trying to figure out if we should kind of expand that more. Um, we kind of want to see where the build is at in the next few weeks, and then kind of make make that decision. Um, but these combo stats down here, that's that's what I was talking about, kind of this, this combo chain stuff over here. Um, and then with the reward structure is also a little different too. So within your fleet, you also get like, you know, boss destruction rewards. And obviously these are all temporary. Uh, boss destruction rewards for how much, you know, damage that you do, um, you know, on the, sh- on, the, on the boss as the time time runs out. Um, but there's also personal damage rewards as well. So... And we're going to have different levels of that. Red so more alarm, people... Red Sorry. alarm. Red alarm. <laughs> Thank you, Sight Up, for following. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, you know, the more damage that you personally do, like if you participate much, much you know, more into, into this, uh, you know, into a fleet boss battle than other members, you will, you will be rewarded with, with greater rewards. No, amazing. That's really cool. Someone in, yeah. So someone in chat is asking, is this the less complex of the two features you hinted at last time you were on our stream? Um, well, we, we're still in the, in the early um, pre-production phases of, of whatever the next feature is. Right. Um, out, we know it's going to be leveraging for depth, right? Depth. Um, that's going to be a focus for ours for, for the, the year. Um, we know you guys have a ton of crew saved up and really not using. And so we want to kind of give you more things to do with your crew. And this is, um, you know, one of the things that we think is going to kind of help. Them. Mm. And and all these, I think, as well, are going to, going to be generated from a massive list as well. So they're not going to be the same ones you're going to be running into every time. That'll be, um, you know, different criteria each time. Mm. Um. Uh, ben, oh, so, uh, our Captain Idol here from Timelines Talk Gazette. Is there going to be uh, any way to customize <laughs> our bridges? Captain Idol here with a live news feed. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, customize Captain Bridge. Um, I don't think that is the plan as of right now. You're kind of just building it. I guess you mm. can kind of say a lot of things, but uh, that is something that we're also looking at. It really depends on um, you know the the, the time um, the time we have remaining and, mm. and whatnot. But we we do have we have talked about potentially adding more bridges in the future. Um, I think it it's easier for us to add new boss new boss battles. Uh, I kind of um, had the team kind of build it in that way where we could uh, you know add new boss battles. You know maybe a few months few months after release. Um, you know and then we can also add levels to the captain's bridge and and whatnot. Hmm. So how has Mission so, Chicago been so far for you? Uh, it's been it's been great. I had my panel yesterday. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was that was fun. Uh, I was up until like three in the morning the night before finishing it. Uh, it's <laughs> been it's been a, a stressful few weeks for us, kind of flying out and whatnot. Um, but it's been a blast. I've, I've you know I've met a a bunch of members and and i feel like everyone who says they're a veteran member says oh yeah you know i'm in the timelines uh timelines talks discord and, and you know i'm in the <laughs> chat and all the time and nice. i'm like oh i knew i recognized your name so much so, yeah. oh that's awesome that's really cool <laughs> and i i met uh stellar yeah yeah awesome awesome stuff thank you for dropping by and giving us that uh that look <laughs> Yeah, that's really course. cool. No, it seems really interesting. It's definitely a lot more than we thought because we say boss battles and we saw what you put in the trailer. But it seems I was surprised about the bridge and the sort of the the, the aligning traits to the combo chain. That'll that'll be really interesting to see how that plays out. Yeah, I yeah, I know. Was... Yeah, of course. Oh uh, well, is is it intended so that these boss battles are going to be on all the time in perpetuity, or is there a start and end time for these things, or what? Yeah, so it's it's up to um, members of the fleet to kind of kick these off, um, and you know that's going to be based off of an energy system, and, and depending on the difficulty, the health you know the health of the boss will kind of adjust the 
uh, the time that the boss will be available to the raid will be available will kind of adjust as well. So, um, yeah, we're okay. still, you know, we're still trying to find our values. And, and I think the final design got, uh, the final numbers came in at the end of last week. I wasn't able to check them. Something we're going to be working on next week. And, and, and hopefully we'll kind of get that put out for release, um, hopefully at the end of next year. Awesome. That soon. Wow. Will you be selling well, us a fine. boss energy pack for real money? You ask, You have to answer now, Ben, and we're going to hold you to it. Not, not at lunch. No, I, I don't okay. know. Yeah, that's we're we're not doing anything like that. Out no. of, for sure. Uh, but well, you know, it's it's a uh, we'll see how it the future does at launch, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. We're working pretty hard behind the scenes on it. It and, looks great. Yeah. 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 So we're 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 excited to, excited to get that out, and we're excited to get. Uh, Lower Decks and Strange New Worlds content. Yes. So, or as soon, um, Badgie will be in the game. Uh, uh, I'm hoping in two weeks, but it might be three weeks. Uh, awesome. So, hmm. Ben, be I, there, I don't think this is, is how is, you're is, supposed is, to do milk mode, dude. You're putting too much into it right now, you know? <laughs> hey, hey, hey you said that, not me. We are not. <laughs> we, we still got features yeah. to add. We still got plenty of things to do with the game. So. Nice. Uh, yeah, we're, cool. are there we're, Are there any other uh, crew you can tell us are, are, are coming in the... In this um, I, initial, yeah, this this guy's a crew. Hold on. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. That's oh, badgy. That's, uh, yeah, badgy. So there's 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 badgy. All right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and, 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 and have we released that pike? Is that a pike? You you released that pike? Yeah. 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 We've, yeah, we've we released that pike. <laughs> yes. Yes. But yeah, there's there's badgy. Um. Yeah. Awesome. Can't believe we're actually getting Badgie. That's kind of nuts to me. <laughs> I, I I wanted Badgie in the game. <laughs> That's right. Uh, As you I should. Can, I, can guarantee, I can guarantee you now that the Nightmare Badgie will be a five star. Uh, that that Badgie, yes. the positive Badgie, will be, yes. will be probably a three star, three star, four star. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. All right, dude. Yeah. Thanks for dropping by. That's yeah, great. Very much. Thank you. Yeah, of course. All right, and incidentally, your hair looks great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know. I'm. 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 Uh, I'm trying to trying to grow yours. What What you got? Well, 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 well. Influence. Game high. I Game got high. It's early. It's baby early. steps. Yeah. Baby steps. <laughs> Hope you've got a lot of L'Oreal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of head and shoulders. Yeah. A head and shoulders. Got a lot of standing underneath waterfalls, flipping your hair. <laughs> right. <laughs> He's a maniac. <laughs> all right guys no, i'll cheers. talk to you soon yeah thank, thank you very you. much ben cheers really? for that. Yeah. I hope you have a good time you too yeah nice wow yes okay let's decompress that <laughs> yeah all right this That's is a chill stream so i tell you what i bought some food today <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everyone's okay, supposed so, to celebrate Badgie. Damn, so damn triggers. <laughs> no, I, that that looks like a lot more than I was expecting, yes, which that's definitely. that's cool. Um, Can we talk about how much more informative that was than the trailer they put up? <laughs> well, <laughs> oh my, I think it it was meant to be a teaser trailer. Yeah. So, yeah, what, what it looked like, what it looked like, it looked like if you guys have ever seen ads for Star Trek timelines in other. Yeah. media like uh, uh, for other games where it's not actually the game where it's yeah. some weird quasi thing that's what that that's what that trailer looked like it's just i i watched it six times and i'm like i don't know what the hell i just watched <laughs> and i've so, played this game for years so yeah auto how, and now now we're looking at that chain combo thing with all the traits how much is that gonna fuck up the big book <laughs> This is going to be the gargantuan book uh, yeah. in a minute. Uh, Namers well, asked, also, said, what was the target date for this feature? He told us late quarter yeah. three, and I said, quarter three starts tomorrow. He's like, no, late quarter three. So probably yeah. end of June, I, I figure. I said end of next month, I think he said, sort of late late May, maybe early June. I well, we'll see. Yeah. yeah. But Badgie coming in a couple of weeks. So. In two to three weeks. That's yeah. pretty nuts. Yeah. Maybe. End of end of this month, we'll be having... Um, an event with, I think they said three lower decks hmm. crew. No, that's good. So we said four, so four or four star badgy possibly as good badgy, five star nightmare badgy, and then the third one. So that's, hmm, hmm there's possibilities. I so. tried to get him. I tried to get him to spill the beans. 
I was. I appreciate I know. it honestly. <laughs> you like you like any new characters? He's like uh, this one. We're like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, I didn't want to say that's that's old ass Christopher Pike. We've had yeah. that for quite a while. Yeah. Red, alarm, you. red alarm! Red alarm! Red uh, alarm! Anything mentioned on if admirals can track participation? No, it wasn't mentioned. Um, I will clip this well, after the show, and something. I'll I'll put that on the. Uh, I'll put that on the Timelines Discord, uh, Timers Talks Discord at some point, so I'll, we'll, I'll post show, I'll get that clip out so people can see it in more detail. Oh, you know, some, Just... something I, I meant to ask before he dropped was that, is that the the trash or whatever, the word that he used, the... Scrap. The, Debris. Yeah, scrap. scrap yeah. Is, is that going to be the same, is that going to be the same Starba Starbase building material, or is it going to be some Well, new yeah, maybe it will be. Maybe that's why they put it in the Uber campaign. Well, in the, yeah. in the, um... In the trailer that they showed, it had the icon as the same as some of those basic components that you can just mm. farm from missions. So that may be part of it. Maybe they have a mix. Um, we'll yeah. see. It's really interesting. I find it really interesting that he mentioned mm. that the admirals of fleets can trigger those. That implies well, yeah. a greater fleet cohesion and more fleet social stuff than Which is cool. has yeah, been a they, part of the game. They ever. better fix the chat, dude. That's, I, that's well, all yeah. I They've <laughs> given up on that a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're well aware well, that everyone I mean, has their own Discord. So, I, I've, I've played other games with with similar mechanics to where it's like, you know, yeah. they, you you start the timer and you have like forty eight hours or something to complete as much of this whatever as you can. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. So, in terms of leveraging crew depth, because that's what a lot of people have been asking for, he did say it's only one ship. I saw people speculating, do you send out one of your own ships at a time and have multiple mm -hmm. out? No, it's it's just the one, but you have to have a crew that matches. I think it's hard locked. I don't know if it's just a bonus or if it's hard locked, uh, that you have to have the straight to mm -hmm. progress to the next thing. So. That's cool. Um, if you want the big mega attack, I think you said you need all of the traits to lock, yeah, and then the your, it unlocks the ability to do a big one. And I imagine it's probably a case of, yeah, you can probably wear it down with your entire fleet if you're all instant damaging the hell out of it, but it's probably way easier and way quicker if you get the combo thing going. Well, that's a, that's a really interesting. I'm already thinking, you know, maybe instant damage crew is not going to work here because it's a big blast, mm. but what if you have a 20-second attack boost that's going to last you a long while in the fight? Uh, maybe boarding damage. <laughs> if you stack that or stack we attack speed, we have to look at we have to look at what's the best the best extended Suddenly, yeah welcome, the best extended well, you know welcome back uh, assimilated Tuvok and uh, <laughs> you know, yeah yeah. yeah yeah I mean I, I really like Repente the look of that. yeah I really like the look of that captain's bridge I think that's something interesting with you doing things to upgrade various points various ships for I think that's going to I think like I'm just looking at the difficulties like they seem to be different difficulties of boss battles obviously no one's going to jump in with their roster now and have and go against brutal you're going to have to upgrade that captain's bridge it's going to be yeah interesting so sort that, of so working through that reminded me of something of like Star Trek Legends like you know where yeah, you could really. have the bridge filtering in. Like, it reminded me a little bit of that mm. way like you know when you got characters they would filter into your bridge and you'd have like Burnham and Worf and Spock all on the same bridge, like hanging out because they were three D models there. I don't know how yeah. quite how it's going to so, work here. Are but... they going to put their art on there, or are they going to do new art for all thousand? I can't imagine they're going to do new art for one thousand two hundred or crew. But the art they showed there was for TOS, so maybe it's going to be a case yeah. of as you complete it, it'll be like completing a jigsaw puzzle, and you just like look now you have yeah. Spock in the uh, chair. Or okay, I think that's the base. So the other thought that I had, and I meant to ask Ben while he was still here, and I just I thought of 10 questions right after he... There was a lot happening, I don't blame you. Uh, so, he was talking about upgrading your ship's abilities. Mm. You know, is that going to be something that is only confined to the boss battle, or is that something that's going to affect your ships at large oh no are we so, gonna get yeah. one second skirmishes are we gonna get single yeah. second skirmishes? Well, that's, that's what i'm thinking that's exactly where Maybe, my mind yeah. went I, I do like that you can also use it to boost your crew overall well i kind of mm. like it there's gonna be people that don't want to collections go down the, down gonna, with collections there's gonna be people that, don't, don't that want world, the boost dude. come on just don't don't ruin yeah. this i have to i'm trying so hard yeah. Yeah. and now you talk people. otto Okay, I'll come back later. See you. Again. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be back. He always comes back. But yeah, I, I yeah, you you're quite right, stars. It could be a way of sort of looking at this to be like, let's 
do away with collection bonuses maybe not focus on that and focus actually maybe this mirror read would be good for something not just mirror collection you know it might be good for something else <laughs> yeah he'll come back don't worry he'll be back <laughs> you guys look so worried it's like where's he gone <laughs> yeah, it's just part of the cafe but it's okay he needs to talk about his dinner come on we are the short stream <laughs> I like how our viewership just suddenly shot up when he put the announcement out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, all, yeah. All, I, all, all the shows can matter. Yeah, I, I am. I am a lot more interested because my 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 prevailing my worry was it was going to be a ship battle with a ticker, which essentially yes, it is that, but it does seem like there's a lot more to it with the traits, with the combo system, and to be able to um go onto the bridge name says i hope we get multiple bridges yeah i kind of do as well that's why i said about that. the customization he said that they're aiming at. yeah yeah i'd like to have like you say which bridge would you like i'd like the enterprise e bridge or i'd like the defiant bridge or you know the cerritos or whatever you know being able to sort of ha customize it to you know like your bridge crew interesting be quite cool yeah I'm gonna send i would like the enterprise C bridge <laughs> wow that's a deep cut no, no it, uh, maybe get like the uh, the Excelsior Bridge, or mm. you know, or I have a Klingon Bridge, or yeah. you know, zero lighting. Yeah, I think yeah, it sort of it sidesteps the the Starbase expansions a little bit as well, doesn't it? Because everyone's done this, you know, everyone anyone that's been playing this game long enough will be in a fully upgraded Starbase and you know, with the with the with the trimming. So that yeah. sort of makes it a bit more personal now, doesn't it? It's not just everyone has to contribute; you kind of have to contribute for everyone else. You know, it's sort of reversed it. I can't believe he's throwing this entire stream in disarray by <laughs> daring to make it into a timeline stream. <laughs> Dare. The subject. Yeah, we're supposed to be talking about beer and food, and we started off so well with lower decks, and then, you know, yeah, come and ruin it. <laughs> ruin our one chance to just catch up. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, also, I mean, um, it's, it's important. <laughs> uh, it, it, we have to adapt to the information that we're given when we're given it. Hmm. So, yeah, what but, shotgun at us? <laughs> yeah. I did like how they had printed out all the screens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was. That was... <laughs> They're all like little A4 paper and just like held up. I was like, look, there's this one. I thought you were drinking like a jar of um, like brown sauce there for a minute. <laughs> Bob room? Oh, I wish. No. <laughs> anyway. I just thought it was a straight bottle of like Rose's grenadine or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just some filterless German beer. It's okay. <laughs> well, if, if All we right, what did I miss? Oh, not a lot. Just us more, more going like, where's Auto gone? You know, when Poochie's not here, we should, the we should be asking, where's Poochie? You went Poochie? to the loo. You went out with the loo, yeah. the toilet. Okay, guys, let's 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 do more chilled out stuff because that's why we're here. We'll talk. Uh, I'll clip that post show. I'll get the whole thing up on our on our Discord. So I'll post that for everyone to see, and I'll pop it on the main timelines Discord as well, and um, probably on the forums as well, and on Twitter because I can. Um, but uh, we'll be armadoring this week, but next week we'll be timelines. Maybe we'll have a bit more chat in a couple of weeks about this and see see where what more information has come out. But we'll guys, see what we can get out of yeah. Ben just by by turning the screws on him. Yes, I think the I'm Discord will pick it all apart. So yeah, do right, we already are. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, we'll we'll have we'll have badgy stuff like in the game to mm -hmm. be talking about at that point. Yeah, guys. I, I've got mm -hmm. tickets. I've got tickets to Star Trek London. Star Trek um, convention in London. My very first Star Trek convention. Uh, a few other timelines talks. People will be there. Uh, I think Cranky and Walt said they were going. I think Seven's trying to go racing as well. Um, I, I've, I'm very nervous. I, have you guys ever been to a Star Trek convention? I have questions. No. Nope. Wow, fake Never. fans, a lot of you. Jesus Christ. <laughs> have you? I've been no, to... <laughs> Uh, I've been to Comic Con a few times. Okay, there we go. Um, and I've been to my actual favorite comic uh, or convention I ever went to was a much smaller one. I think it was called London uh, London Creators Comic Con. I think it was. Okay. It was a much smaller one because um, 
London Comic Con or um, MCM Expo, as I believe it's actually officially known, mm. was a bit loud, a bit corporate. Um, you need to bring water and food, and you you yeah. will need to sit down multiple times. You otherwise you will die. Okay. Um, everyone always makes that mistake on their first like trip, and it always kills them. Hydrate. Um, also. Make sure you have time. If, if it's the kind of convention I think it is, you're going to need a lot of money and you do not want to have um, a reliance on either your card or the idea of, oh, I'll just pop to a, ca- uh, a cash machine. Uh, there will be a line yeah. outside. Don't line do that. and so. a charge of about £4.50 just to move your own money, yeah. Well, the, the interesting... Yeah, so bring yeah. cash, bring cash. Okay, that, that's good to know. Um, uh, Robert, Robert Picardo is going to be there. He's going to be one of the people I'm going to take. I'm going to book to meet him and get a sign of it. I'm also going to show him the video that he did for us as well and tell him about the charity. So I'm kind of keen to do that. I'm quite happy he's there. Oh, very year. good. So I really was keen to do that. But yeah, I was really gutted because last year's Star Trek convention in London was on my birthday and I didn't go. And I can't remember why I didn't go and I wish I had. So it's just kind of me going, um, yeah, let's go to London. But, I, you know, uh, Cranky's coming. Um, I think Loki said he's going to pop in. We've got a discussion group about it on the... Uh, on the Time Loss Talks Discord if you want to come and sort of... We, I think we're going to aim to meet up at some point and have a few drinks and a laugh. Yeah. I'm staying over. I'm staying in a hotel nearby, so it's going to be fun. But I'm excited. I'm excited for my first Star Trek convention. I've, I don't know yeah, what to expect. Uh, yeah, so stuff, so just, you're, bas- you're basically inviting all of the uh, Timelines Discord people to come in and trash your hotel room on your dime. <laughs> Too right. That's what I'm hearing. It's okay because yeah. I booked under my wife's name. <laughs> <laughs> of course <laughs> but yes i'm that's, gonna that's 3021 thinking yeah. name it. i assume you'll be wearing the yellow shirt i might bring this i think i might i might do that but i'm, I'm actually tempted to get some time Rise talks t-shirts printed up as well i think i might do oh that my lord. yeah oh yeah oh my do. lord <laughs> too right <laughs> um <laughs> why not <laughs> yeah i'm not well, sure I've, i'm not I've, sure where i'm oh no no no, no. Go, ahead, go ahead go ahead no you talk yeah um no, we all talk. Um, let, let's see. There's been like two basically streams of convention I've done, which was uh, MCM, which was very loud. You spend lots of money. Um, there's everyone is in costume. You have a great time, but it's exhausting as hell. Um, and then the other one I did, which was more of a creator focused one, and that's where I got to meet the writer of my favorite comic book ever. Um, and I, he was literally just like sat. He had like a, a, a small table, and there were maybe four people at his table um because he wasn't a massive draw um hmm. and i i brought my little tray of paper back i was like oh, could, you, could you sign this for me um he said um and he looked at it and he laughed and he said oh i think i must have signed every copy of this that was ever made um because it literally got five <laughs> issues and it was immediately cancelled because oh, wow. it wasn't pre-ordered enough that's how like and <laughs> I, I just really appreciated that candidness and I got to talk to him for like five or ten minutes about my favorite comic book. And that was like, that wasn't something that would have happened at MCM. I imagine it might be more like that at, um, at London. Mm-hmm. I don't know off the head because like, the autograph stuff is a bit more personal than how yeah. MCM was, but I don't know off off of my head. But I hope you have a good time. What mm. was the comic? Oh, it's an X-Men comic. Um, it's called Sword No Time to Breathe. It's mm-hmm. very, very f- cute and fluffy and high sci-fi and i had a it's one of my favorite comic books of all time does it have um, hank mccoy in it yes <laughs> there you go that's what i thought <laughs> of course it yeah. <laughs> I, I am predictable like have i not shown off my little my, oh, my collection yeah. up there yeah. oh yeah <laughs> you, yeah you did on the first charity stream you as did, I recall. yeah we got the tour. Uh, I did, so yeah. you did your tour your last year i did my tour this year who's whose turn is it next year <laughs> Big show. Big. I think it might be big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like you can see all of our Christmas ornaments and uh, <laughs> my various shoes. Uh, it'll be very exciting. No, actually, I could I could show you my uh, my graphic novels and trivia books mm. that I have Ooh, up above my nice. head. Uh, it, and or my uh, my NES, Super Nintendo, and uh, Sega Ooh. Genesis collection that I'm currently trying to sell, which oh, really? is, turns out to be far more well okay so sidebar mm-hmm. i uh, about 10 ish no oh no it's got to be more now because the years just keep going don't they uh no that sounds your stare the light content like 16, train doesn't stop rolling <laughs> yeah but like 16 18 years ago i i decided you know what um i 
have the means to do this, I'm going to start reacquiring all of the games that I had mm. when I was mm. very small. I think everyone uh, goes through that. I've been through that phase at one point. I have also <laughs> anyone, done that. Yeah. Yeah. that had like a, I had a master system, so the first thing I did is like, I'm going to go find a master system with Alex the Kid 2 built in. And I went and played yeah. and went, yep, that'll do. <laughs> and then put it no. down and never well, touched and it again. So I, um, I bought um, what was at the time cutting edge in uh, these things, which was a, a Retron 3. Wow. Which was Ooh. it's a it's a console that will play NES, Super NES, and Sega Genesis cartridges. Ah, yes. And then also has the ports, so you can plug in the original controllers of those systems. Oh, wow. So you can have a pretty authentic experience. Um, and then I it was just a periodic going through eBay and finding lots of these games uh, at a price that I could afford. And I don't think I ever paid more than maybe thirty dollars for any specific cartridge. That's not bad. That's pretty good. Well, and so well, and that's getting to where I am now because I have now I have other ways of of getting that retro game uh, experience. So it's like I don't necessarily need the original stuff anymore, and it's just kind of sitting in a box, taking up space. So I went to it was actually it was facebook marketplace and i was like you know what i'll just i'll just list this collection up for a price that i thought was appropriate uh and uh the second i posted it 25 people said yes i'll take it full price now wow and then one per <laughs> and then one person uh said uh dude just one of these games is worth more than what you've listed this entire collection for. Mm. Oh my god! And so I okay, so I I listed I listed it for for three hundred dollars. Uh, yeah, that's probably because, way too low. Uh, yeah. So turns out that just um, I have a a copy of uh, Chrono Trigger for Super yeah. Nintendo. Wow. Yeah. And yeah, turns out that on its own, on a bad day, is worth two hundred bucks. Wow. So now I, I I had to pull it down, and then now I'm going to have to reevaluate. I, yeah. I valued the collection. Now it's somewhere in the neighborhood of about a thousand bucks worth of oh, stuff. Nice. Very nice. So it's like, yeah. So now I have to figure out how I'm going to, because I think now I, I really do have to uh, sell this because now I'm just sitting on a bunch of money that I could be using for other stuff. So yeah, that's that's something I'm gonna have no, to. No gold cartridges there <laughs> that say Olympic Games in there, or because <laughs> I know that. No, 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 no. I mean, Just I mean, think they're, they're... big. That's so many Uber campaigns, oh, right? No, actually, what, what I want to what I want to do is uh, I want to I want to buy a, a guitar with it, but <laughs> nice. <that's>, uh... yeah. <laughs> so I think I got a yeah. friend of mine that's he's that's trying me. to collect. Uh, every Game Boy game that's re that was released in the UK, and he's got he has got ninety percent of them, and he's saying the last ones he finds are just well beyond his budget. Like, like can talk about three hundred quid for the for the cartridge, but I've, he's got a special cabinet, and it is just loaded of Game Boy games. Pretty much every single one that was well, nearly you know ninety percent of released, and it's it's impressive. And I said, so how many of them have you played? And he's like, oh, none of them, <laughs> but like maybe like two or three. But I now have to collect. Got to catch them all, you know. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, yeah, the Twitch with Jay. No, these these are either just uh, he's asking if or they're asking if these are games with boxes and manuals. No, the only one that is actually in a box is a uh, the Sega Genesis version of Mortal Kombat. That's in a box. That's the rest cool. of these are all just loose uh, loose cartridges. So no. Oh yeah, uh, no cranky. You, he's asking yes. Then we can. Have you shredding some heavy riffs on the oh, show? Yes, I could will. do that right now, my friend, if I wanted to. We, we, and that's no, that's. You, you've done some recording yeah. for me. When we get round to the Klingon campaign, the Klingon Star Trek Adventures campaign, um, you, there'll, be, there'll be a big cameo. <laughs> there'll be a big cameo on the soundtrack, <laughs> definitely. It's sounding awesome. Yeah, and I, I, I'm so happy with how that came out that I hope more yeah. than more of that is coming in the future because I, mm. I, I re got the bug to <laughs> nice to do some shredding I'll send some stuff your way. <laughs> Also, yeah. did you right? Because you you were a classic sort of RTS gamer back in the time. Did you remember in the nineties getting the big boxes for the games? Well, like on about fifteen different floppy disks, sort of like with the Age of Empires and things like that. 
Yeah, once or twice, but it was mostly my brother would get a ripped CD from a guy he knew at school <laughs> and had the game on it. Yeah. And it was it was written like in Sharpie marker, uh, like StarCraft Disc 1 or something. Yeah. And <laughs> you had to load it up that way. So, dude, that was th- those big like box sets yeah. with like the manuals and the fold out and everything. Those were pretty expensive for. Oh, yeah. You know, for I'm, I'm not of your generation. I'm a little bit younger than you guys. So, you know, <laughs> for, for, for my age back then, it was a little bit too pricey to just walk in the store and, and get the, the ones you want. I think I did that maybe for Diablo, but not too mm-hmm. many of the others. So, oh, I get your uh, Blizzard war chests and whatnot. To... Yeah. Wow. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Bloody hell. No, I remember the <laughs> first. I don't know if I've told the story before. Have I told you the story about my first copy of Doom? I told you this yeah. one. Oh, you got it from your uh, your your local priest, right? Yeah, the local, the, yeah, the the vicar that lives sort of like uh, the church was opposite where we lived. To turn around, and, here, play this, and I was like, oh, he's going to give you some educational Christian game. No, it was Doom. <laughs> you could kill demons. <laughs> like, fantastic. Anyway, I've, I've told the story. What before. could be more Christian? Them. Exactly. It's fantastic. <laughs> Rip and tear, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you talking or him? <laughs> Both. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> We just then we, then we just played some sick metal and just headbang for the rest of the evening. There you go. <laughs> um, uh, speaking of getting big to cameo on the thing, I just picture like big in like Fetclair like makeup and just doing the shred and like featuring big as Fetlar, <laughs> just like doing the underworld <laughs> shred. <laughs> I, I wish we had thought that far into it because that <laughs> would have been funny. <laughs> Since we're still, since we're still doing chilled out stream, I cooked because this is chilled out. I apologize for the timelines inter uh, timelines in, intervention there, Ben. Why do you have to come and derail our chilled out stream? Wait till Wednesday. Come on, dude. And uh, now I actually want to talk more about it. Like <laughs> in the past, I'm like, let's do it. I'm like, let's not do Trek on the show. Let's talk about food or whatever. <laughs> and then he comes in with that. It's like, just like you're putting too much about. Trek on our chilled out stream. I'm like, all right, okay, let's chill. Well, out. Here's, let's here's, here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> I, I don't think, and this is just my personal definition, that the chilled stream is a timelines free zone. I think that the t- the chilled out stream is whatever we want to talk yeah. about, be it timelines or Listen, or whatever. We, we we talk about things we're hyped about. We're pretty hyped about this, so you know why not? Yeah. So what did you want to say? Porn jumped in call before we went live. He was crash. I'm not even kidding. He was crashing a one year old's birthday party at a brewery. <laughs> yeah. That's all we know. And then he hung up. So yeah. he's probably getting smashed As, with a toddler. Somewhere. I'm looking forward to seeing him later. <laughs> Dummy. He's, in a, his he's mouth. a true Renaissance man. Just, mm-hmm. you know, living everyone's best life. Getting uh, you wanted to talk about food, Idol, so... Uh, you're the, okay, uh, yes, I cooked for the very first time. For the very first time, I cooked squid. So I went out with uh, went out with my son the other day. He says, I really want to go out for a walk. All right, let's go for a walk. We passed the fish shop. When they sell, you know, if you've seen British fish shops, it's usually like a platter of fish and all sorts of things. I'm looking there going, um, uh, I'll have squid. And have you ever... Uh, guys, if you if you ever taken a whole squid and filleted it? No. Like, just, just wondering. You no. might have... Might have do you know there's like a I have piece never of... consumed a squid. Have you never eaten squid? Done anyway. Anything to prepare it. Squid's great. But Squid's quite like... nice actually if it's done well. Yeah, but the, the, when when they take it apart, because I said because he said do you want me to fill it for you, I was like yes please. I've never I would have no idea what to do with this. I just I'll probably just chop up and just throw it in something. But he, as he prepared it, he sort of chopped it up and then he went, reached inside it and he pulled out what looked like a bit of plastic that's about that long, and I looked at him and I said I said. Is that something it's caught? It's like, no, no, this is something it naturally... Yeah, this long, this thick. Thank you, Wesley. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he said, no, no, they naturally produce this. And honest to God, looks like a piece of just like something that's broken off a water bottle or something like that. It's naturally part of its body. It's very strange. Anyway, we got that, got that, took it back. I, I dusted it up with a bit of, bit of batter, fried it up. Fucking gorgeous. Really nice. Mm. Good. That was that's not a bit of squid is lovely. If you do it right, don't overdo it. Don't cook it too long, because uh, otherwise it goes rubbery. But no, this is soft, succulent, slipped down nicely. <laughs> You're full of clips, you know that. <laughs> 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 yes, we're on squid so, talks now. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, I I, I don't want to trace it back, but uh, but Otto, if you have if you have thoughts about the stuff that you want to keep talking about with the. Uh, oh, yeah. With the Ben Ben Do, No, I'm, I'm, sh- I'm sure it'll all come up in the future. So it's fine. 
I, it's more than I expected, mm-hmm. and yes. hopefully, like I said, instead of going, let's kill everything in two seconds, maybe we have to shift our thinking and have different sets of crew for different we, kinds of ship when battles. He tri- when he triggered cool. the, the ship battle, he said, oh, I'm going to put it on speed and auto. That wasn't running for like six seconds, boom, and done. That was running for a, a fair amount of time, so it looks like you're going to be sitting right. in there for a bit. So, And I don't know if, if the planet is going to shoot back. Is there a point where you're going to die? Well... Uh- he said that at the moment that build was bugged so that it was doing way less damage than it was meant right, to. Yeah. That implies to me that you will not be able to survive for very long. Okay. Well, Major. that's where evasion and hull repair and everything, mm. so you really have to kind of... You it, mean those you abilities that have been in the game right. for like five years will finally be usable? Well, that's great. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If you're well, going to talk about using crew with traits that are insignificant, and even with ship abilities that were previously insignificant, that is great. That is... Adding a new dimension mm. to things we just went, oh yeah, fuck it, Killy, you know? <laughs> Ardra, Killy, let's go. I've already looked up crew on bigbook.app, and I have Vengeful Lorel, 14 <laughs> second duration. I see uh, Gloria with uh, uh, attack boost up to 11 with a 12 second duration. Governor Wharf might be good for this Ooh. game mode, so. Man, is this, is this going to affect everyone's well, and- side lists as well? Wow. This is. This is hmm. well, and, you know, I, the. the, the the, Sorry, big. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, well, I was just going to say that the, the the animation of the planet killer actually looked pretty freaking cool too. Too bad. I mean, it. it's, I mean, it's going to be something that we'll get bored with soon because we're going to do it a hundred times. But it actually looked pretty cool mm-hmm. for what it's worth. He did say the more damage you do, the better the rewards. So it's it's not like your yeah. your fleet is not going to drag rewards. you down if, you, if you're a really yeah. active player then. He made he made mention yeah. that uh, obviously the rewards he showed off, which were trainers honor and something else, were were not final. <laughs> but better than the objective events. Yeah. <laughs> oh, names like yeah. I want damage leaderboards. That would be cool. Who did the most damage? Who is contributing the most? Well, Who's and also there was the, the longest. Yeah. There was the idea that you can you can pick your difficulty level of yeah. how, and pick it for the fleet. I guess is the idea. So it's mm. like, do you want to? Do you want to go for the go for the gold, and possibly not get there, or do you want to go for the you know the smaller, medium, the okay, okay, the taller, grande, okay. Uh, now, battles and, I'm yeah. picturing like like our, our, our fleet leader, our, our esteemed Garrick, who has you know, to take a step away from the game for a bit, but we love him. He's in our hearts forever. He is forever our admiral. Um, and I'm just picturing him as Lord Farquaad, and we're down in the in the in the in the square, and he's like, "Some of you may die, but that is a sacrifice I am willing to make." <laughs> it's like that's all I can picture with him setting the difficulties. Like, no, brutal or nothing, go do it, dude. You know, Get everyone's just gonna go max difficulty, and when they fail, they're gonna go to the forums. They're gonna be really angry, and they're gonna be like, "Why did I die?" So, well, okay. and that's that's no, the no, please okay. Well, and that's that's the thing, though, is that because you are choosing when it starts and stops, it's not like it's a thing that goes across the entire game where they'd be like, well, I didn't get my thing. It's like, well, that's your own fault. And it, there's no you global didn't cooperate reward. with your fleet. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. I mean, and yeah, because we've already seen a bit of synergy uh, when retrievals were released where, where they added the ISM goals for completing your dailies. And that ki- that kicked things into life with certain fleets that went, right, we need more people, or, oh shit, we've only got two people, maybe we'll bugger off and merge, and things like that. Um, I think this will probably be the next step of uh, kicking up fleet participation to, yeah, be, be interesting to see. What My question to you guys... So the Planet Killer's been sort of toted as the first kind of boss where we see they've been heavily featuring that. What are the big baddies? Abraham Crystalline Lincoln. Entity. <laughs> Sorry, what was your stars? <laughs> Crystalline Entity. Oh, That's the okay. obvious one. No, I think Abraham Lincoln. Green yeah. Hand yeah. from TOS. Yeah, yeah. Green, yeah. green Hand. Yeah. The Fazarius. The Fazarius, the spinning cube, maybe? Well, yeah, it's it's like, could they, yeah, could, they, could they actually make a board cube threatening again? <laughs> that would be nice. That'd be the one. Yeah. But wouldn't the irony with, with there the be you thing. take a Borg, a, a very smaller Borg cube to fight a larger Borg cube? <laughs> Why does the larger cube not simply envelop the smaller cube? <laughs> <laughs> so it could be, it could be like Birth of, it could of, be like Birth of the Federation, where you have the Tamarian vessel and it's the most difficult thing to kill in the world. <laughs> no. No. Big made me think this actually might be. For Europeans, it might be a godsend because we're always complaining mm. like Gauntlet ends at two in the morning yeah. and stuff. 
if you're in, because people tend to gravitate toward fleets that they share time zone or whatever with, it might be nice for, I don't know, um, fleets in, in the Asian region or, or in Europe that they can start it when they want to, they'll be awake for it. And that could be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, Cranky mentions Ransom's head eating your ship from the, I think it was the first episode of season two of Lower Decks with the giant Ransom head. Yeah. pack lead. So, they want pack lead ships. The, and the other, the other leg of this is what are the rewards going to be? Mm. What, what are you going to get out of this? If it's, if it's, going to be something that's that's worth the effort or not okay so ben said sorry he he jumped this in chat he said uh obviously things will change yeah, before yeah. release so take it all with a grain of salt so i think I it must won't be anything sure. i don't think it'll be anything outrageous like a site or a premium pack i don't think they'll they'll go down that route i think if you beat the boss and everyone gets the max rewards i think you'll get a healthy amount of honor and merits maybe some single pulls something like that i i, I could see it being down that road maybe even some quantum maybe tiny bit of quantum maybe. that'd be nice a Probably of quantum. yeah just a single quantum just to keep you going i just want i want i want global leaderboards like yeah even if you're not competitive it's still fun to see what people are doing mm. and if you know people are cheating god forbid and you see someone that uh, some fleet that does three times the damage of everyone else like at least then you know we'd know about it so mm. well and, and here's the thing it's like there there are there is a minor small but vocal minority of people where arena and ship battles are their main thing mm -hmm. their bread and butter that they, they, oh, they, they love they're gonna the be the oracles stuff. now that people are going to come to those guys and be like yeah. what do we do i'm just i could i could only use the Creighton. <laughs> who else <Yeah>. is there <laughs> so <laughs> they were like yeah. Haha, so i have spreadsheets for everything <laughs> i really appreciate that there are there are a yeah. lot of dominoes in this thing that you know you could really do a lot of parsing a lot of uh optimizing before you really get it figured out how how to do it the best way possible but at this point i am going to have to leave you guys so uh, uh thank I, you Vic. yeah <laughs> so I, I i appreciate the we're time glad to have I, had you yeah, yeah. you so came at the right moment i'll, I'll save my I'll save my coffee story for for next chill stream. So, <laughs> take it easy, guys. I want to hear it. Have See a good one, man. Um, another idea I thought of a boss you could have it could just be William Shatner's hubris or his ego. Just unassailable. <laughs> but yeah. So um, I, I'm curious. We saw in that um, that demo, Klingon cultural figure investigator. How granular do you think they're going to get? Do you think we're going to get probe? Do you think we're going to get Antidean? Pull up cool. in chat, folks. Let me know uh, what reason you're more excited mm. for. I would like it if they just did the random, just every trait in the game was just a random pick because then you'd look at it and weigh up the pros and cons of whether you're going to take Reaver into the Rematis 3 trait. <laughs> so I, I'm i going to have to go back and watch this uh, mm. Tomorrow, but did he say that these were hard locked or because like in skirmish they have they also have traits but they just give you more vp for the big mega combo god killer big dick energy attack yes that one requires those traits okay. to be unlocked hmm. and there was and that's gonna so, give you, yeah there's yeah. gonna be some really niche <laughs> i yeah. want it to be niche i literally yeah. wanted yeah, to be yeah, a case yeah. of like how how niche can it get? Is there a, a, a crew that has like one trait that no one else has? There's got to be one or two, right? Well, that'd be the, completely the one unique. Tuesday, like like people, there's like, there's like a Reva. lot of those. Yeah, like Reva. there's like yeah. there's like a hundred Tosk. There's like a hundred traits that only have one or two uh, crew. Yeah. I mean, that two, so. There's only two two crew that are uh, Dosai. Yeah, Dosai. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Okay. Here's Mugato. A, here's, here's a thought experiment. What if I probably shouldn't put this out in the universe. What if there was one of these and they wanted something like Tosk, Mugato, Kelpian, whatever, and you mm -hmm. had to complete it, but they give you uh, something like three gold sites or five gold sites at the oh, end. Wow. And it's like really hard. Like, <laughs> w would you go to retrieve a crew that you don't have to unlock a thing to get a reward at the end? Like it how, depends on the time how deep scale. down the rabbit hole. Are they going to run this for six months? Because that's kind of like, if you're going to talk about retrieving a crew that we're going to use for that kind of stuff, that would have to be, you know, 
No, I, I, they're probably going to be either like a day or or, or forty eight hour thing. I would imagine. I don't think I want for that short a time. It depends on sort of how much how much you want to divert from people's usual investment. But then I suppose boss battles might shift everyone's investments from voyages to this. It might be at the new, uh, well, the new metric. I'm also wondering. Yeah. I'm also wondering how accessible they're going to be because like there was obviously a little energy timer there, um, and we saw obviously the Doomsday Machine. Are we sure that the Doomsday Machine will go away? Is there going to be like a first menu where it's like pick which ship you want to take a pop at? It's like here's the Doomsday Machine that was season one. Here's season two, Crystalline Entity, and then you can just pick. So mm. if you failed on the first time round, maybe you can do it again if you get like a particular. I wonder if they'll repeat it. Like they'll that. be like seasons or something like that. Yeah. yeah, I would imagine that it's it's only going to be one ship available at a time, and you can pick yeah. the difficulty, and they'll rotate it out when I don't know if they yeah, do it once I, a month. Or I wonder whatever. if they'll change the rewards Maybe. with the ship. If they'll say like, right, Doomsday Machines here, this is what you win for this. Okay, now it's time for Crystalline Entity. You win this stuff, and then in about a year's time, they go, we're going to rerun the Doomsday Event one because you missed out on these events, an Avatar or whatever, you know, things like mm. that. When we played this little guessing game with WRG during the charity stream, one of the things we guessed at is how long it takes a ship from the drawing board to mm. modeling it up to getting it in game and debuting it. And and I think he said around five, six weeks. Like I think we guessed mm. three, four, and five weeks. And he said more toward the, the, the longer end of that. So mm. if it's a once a month thing, maybe uh, they would have, because they have to model up a ship and. Like a, a unique attack ability, like we saw, it's not going to be the Doomsday Machine firing phasers and photon torpedoes. Yeah, it's going. Yeah, yeah, yeah does the that anti-proton beam. Yeah. If it's like, if it's that worm thing from Galaxy's Child, it's going to do the little purple uh, lightning bolts and oh my if it's god, crystal and entity, it's going to scratch your ship. I thought about <laughs> I a bit we could do. We can sort of play the demo for the the thing, the boss battles that they've played, and then one of us will just stand here and do the insurrection thing. A podium can come out the ground and just have a joystick and go like, <laughs> "Give me control, do the insurrection, Roika." That's how they should have done the teaser trailer. Just yeah. have Ben stand there and then. <laughs> They could have got. You I mean, like a joystick, got like shakily Surely come up from underneath. Mm. <laughs> God knows you can afford the joystick. It only costs about five bucks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it looks like folks in chat are much more excited for boss battles than they were for crew retrieval. Yeah. Mm. Which I, crew retrieval was great because it was kind of no strings attached. We're like giving you free stuff basically, mm. or heavily discounted stuff, and that was really great. But there, you could. There's like a hard limit to how much depth there is involved, and this seems like a much deeper system. Uh, yeah, they could do with, a lot with this. Yeah, not enough comes up with Vija. Vija be an interesting one, but I don't know if that yeah. was ever a battley boss. But then it did fire the the weird sort of torpedoes that it, took took down the ship. So maybe. Yeah, it ate up the Klingon, yeah, yeah. the Klingons. Klingon. <laughs> Just play that. Klingon. Thank you, Commander Williams. <laughs> yeah, I. Anything with global boosts has me uh, mm. into it already. I'm, I, am, mm. I am actually interested in the ship-specific boost, because if you're then taking certain ships to be a bonus in the ship battle, again, it's it might... cling on. Thank you, Cranky. Uh, it, might solve, it might solve the problem of uh, the ships you're collecting being useless. Same problem with crew you buy being useless. Then maybe they'll be like, you need to complete this with a four-star nebula variant, you know. You can absolutely see it being thematically linked. Like, you have to use a TOS Enterprise variant, like, mm. either the ISS Enterprise or the Four of Star or a Constitution cool. class That'd in general. Cool. I could see it being locked like that. You can only defeat the Valdor with um, the Shinzod ship. The, um, uh, fuck, what was the, it? The uh, Scimitar. The Scimitar, that's the one, yes. That'd be fine. It, it sort of takes the place of, I think a lot of people just tap through event text anyway, so this mm. kind of replaces the flavor of that without having to slow you down and make you read, which not everyone likes to do in a mobile game. So. Oh, you just reminded me something. I need to check something, actually. I keep on talking. Of course, no, I can't <laughs> think of what I wanted to say. But I, I think oh, as long as there's... So, there we go. As long as there's so, mobile boosts of, attached, yeah. people, may not want, people may not want to engage with it, but they're going to feel compelled to to help boost other parts of their game, so... Well, considering mm. the fact that he showed off like command boosts and stuff like that, like yeah. if that's like global, if that's like if it works like collections or starbase bonuses, you need that to be competitive. The the release video cool. said it showed five percent base, and then you could upgrade by one more percent. So that's like half a starbase already. It might go up to mm. ten. So, yeah, 
um incidentally so you were talking about tapping through event text um when i was doing my ch uh, phase two changeover i picked the option to um i think you asked kira how she's doing in the 1960s um and then bones uh dark ages mccoy turns up um and i was like that's red an odd alarm. choice she's not a red alarm. thank red you alarm. silver medal tavern thank you for following <laughs> yeah. Um, if you look him up, he's not displaced. No, we had this conversation. Yeah, recently. but but Wonderland Taylor is so. Well, this is the thing, isn't it? Um, and it was just kind of amused me that, like, the, considering it's, that's fine. This is natural state of being. Yeah, no, it just maybe like because like paying attention to the event text means you miss. Uh, otherwise, you miss out on stuff like that, where it's like, hmm, why why is McCoy here? Like, to be fair. He does mention living in an apartment with um, Kirk and Spock for months, and it's like that sounds hilarious. I'd want to see that sitcom. Is is Labor Kirk and Labor Spock displaced? No, no. and no, it's kind it of on. Be. It's on the borderline. I don't want to do like a whole conversation on it because there's <laughs> still like thirty crew that we could talk about. But yeah. with this kind of feature out, I have to imagine they're going to do a trait audit around the to. time it comes out. They have to. So. I'm going to keep plugging away with adding names to that list. Dude, I keep okay. getting the character limit. It's like the body can only contain 18,000 characters. I'm like, well, it is not of the body. <laughs> Does the will That's of land so, awesome. Awesome. <laughs> so also, how, how are you going to feel when they eventually go, we are launching fleet boss battles, you will need to do these traits, and then you're just going to have to look at them, and then they're going to have, in the event text, gonna have, we will be conducting a trait audit. And how are you going to feel? Consulting it with depends, our dear friend, depends, Automaton 2000. It depends how many of them they actually... If they only accept like a third of them and reject the rest of them, be like, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> they only add all the non-collection I'm traits. right, damn it! I'm the only one who knows! <laughs> <laughs> no, well... You know, I... I just want, mm. like, if you're, if they're going to do an audit, give us, like, give, DM me a list to be like, all right, we rejected these ones so I can send them to the side. And or do what you did for Displaced and be like, this is what the trait means. And it makes it so much easier. I mean, people are still arguing on the forums about Displaced and they gave us that description. So maybe it won't help, but mm. it would still be nice to be like, all right, these are what the trait means. Just like stick it in a... In a in a thread somewhere that we can reference it in the future, and that would be fine. But uh, that'd be that'd be probably the most plot on, traits, that'd be the plot of ideal. I think they're finally coming around to the fact that traits power everything in the game. Mm. You know, void it, it, it boost your voyages, more, your collections, yeah. everything. It matters more now since retrieval collections and now this boss battles than it ever did when I first started playing. Because I dismissed oh, yeah, traits absolutely. at first back then because it's like it's occasional void trait and that's about it. And when no one's hitting twelve out or the bear half of them were flavor back then. Back when yeah. you had stuff like oh they're a lord or they're a chancellor or they're a brat, you know. Rich. It's like <laughs> yeah, rich exactly. Dude, there's, I, I guess they changed it, but there was a, in episode four there was a node unlock. You had to have the rich trait to do it. It was like was a Ferengi mission. Ooh. I think they fixed it when they removed say. the trait, but uh, was, was it now? Do you know? No. Wealthy. <laughs> I I think I can look it up. Endowed. So <laughs> well, hmm. <laughs> that's a slightly different conversation there, Idle. Um, man, yeah, that's an interesting. I really do think they're going to have to do a trade audit. Like, if they're going to be leveraging it more and more for an entirely new feature, where it's required, it feels like it's going to be required if you want to be doing the big damage and getting the big bonuses. People are going to be like, "This crew I have should technically count for this." Especially if they're going to be getting niche. I feel they're going to get more and more niche and drilling down on some really obscure traits and leveraging that crew depth like they say they want to. They're going to have to be accurate on these traits. I, I am I'm a little bit surprised at how much depth there apparently is based on the turnaround. Cause yeah, right. We had skirmish. So, all right, the, the last big, actual big, big thing was Voyages in 2017. I think it was quarter three-ish. Hmm. I think Gauntlet came a little bit before that. But so 2018, we had skirmishes, but those were kind of just arena battles with sort of a, a, limited, UI, a, yeah. a limited a limited, HUD attached. Since then, what have we had? Like we had campaigns, that's, that's not a thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then we had crew retrieval, which is great, but it's not actually, you're, you're not, it's not much gameplay really. You're kind of sitting there planning stuff out. Objective events are really not 
anything new. So Definitely this is kind of like, even though there's a ship bell component for part of it, I, th- I think it's different enough that you can kind of say that this is like a new feature on its own. Well, it's also like, I think it's not even just how the gameplay works and so, but the fact that it is so fleet dependent, where it's like, apart from your star base, yeah. there is nothing in this game that is actually reliant on being part of a fleet. If you didn't have star base bonuses, you could be without a fleet and be completely fine. Like, yeah, you'd be down 550 on a, a few crons and um, some ISM. That's all you'd be missing out on, yeah. apart from star base bonuses. But now, you actually, well, your fleet admiral, you have to pay attention to what they're doing. You also get rep- replications each day, which is actually quite nice quality oh, yeah. of life. Yeah, that's but... true. That's true. Yeah. yeah. I, I think for yeah. a long time we were brainstorming what could they put in collections that would be really cool. Like they could do more replications, they could do this or that, and they're like, no, we're just going to kind of do the same boost for every collection. So I and wonder. It is the same if... boost. It's always sec. Yeah. I wonder. <laughs> I wonder if they're going to get a little more creative with with these rewards. We'll see. Hmm. Hmm. Chat, what kind of rewards would you want? And don't say citations, because everyone said citations. Be be a little out of the box on this one. What kind of rewards would you want? I want... I mean, I don't need them now, but for everyone that hasn't got Section 31 tanked, what about faction items? What about, like, you know, the security codes, the hollow emitters, the tactical alerts? That would be... Not hollow emitters, hollow programs, you know. So I did notice, uh, um, while it was obviously the demo stuff, um, there was the one-star hollow emitter in that personal reward thing. Can you imagine if Fleet Boss Battles dropped basic hollow programs? <laughs> if if they're one of the things you use to upgrade either your ship boost mm. or your 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 uh, crew boost, then that would be okay. They did put it in a campaign recently, so maybe that's what they're going to charge to upgrade this stuff. Here's a thought. Yeah, not, got... ju- not just hollow emitters, though, like hollow programs, like the ones that you use to actually build crew oh, hollow equipment. Program. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, those as well. You could do both. Ronaldo uh, just gave me a funny idea. So re- the reward, unlock yet a newer game mode. Do you, guys ever <laughs> me- do you guys ever hear about Frog Fractions? Do you ever hear about this, Stars? I heard it was weirdly complex for a game that looked so, like it was about math. Yeah, so basically it set itself up to look like a re- re- kid's maths game, but it went really off the deep end, got really weird, and sort of went down different various genres of games. Frog Fractions is like the game that defined other ga- It was a really strange game. Well, there was rumours they, they did that, made an impact on the internet, you know, being what it was, and then they went down the road of like, well, where's Frog Fractions 2? And they said, what well, we'll on Frog Fractions 2? And then they said, we've released it, but there was no game available. What they did is actually hit it, hit Frock Fractions 2 in another game called Glitter Mitten Grove, where you had to complete certain commissions on that, and then you would unlock Frog Fractions 2. <laughs> I thought, that's brilliant. I love that idea. So maybe they'll do, do something like that. You have to like beat the planet killer, and then finally you can unlock, I don't know, away I, missions I do remember... Um... Valve did an alternate reality game thing or whatever the hell it's called. They put they updated the end of Portal yes. with mm. with like the these little teasers and a lot of people thought it was finally going to be Half Life Two yeah. Episode Three. We're like, yes, yes, it's finally fucking coming, and it ended up being Portal Two, which mm. obviously makes a lot more sense based on where they put it. But that was I remember following that live, and that was like really cool. You had like a big community mm, after trying to that. figure out where you're going with that. Let me jump back and read these because I did ask chat. What, what do you want to see as rewards uh, from this game mode? Cadet tickets? That would be good. That gives you a little more player agency over or, over what kind of yeah. stuff you want to come in. Um, yes, cadet tickets. Um, okay, I guess that's New it. Avatar. That's all you guys are getting cadet tickets. Speaking of, okay, speaking Avatar, of, speaking of Portal so yes. 1 and all that, how, oh, like, we've been teased for this for ages, but how hyped were you if you played Portal was it Portal 2, of going into that one mm. room and seeing the Borealis um, lifeboat sort of thing, and you'd be like, oh, there's the link to Half-Life, and get, they're going to go expand all this, and then we just had nothing, except Half-Life Alex, which was a VR game, and it's like, I remember the community for Half-Life getting so hyped around that moment, like... Half-Life I've never played fun. Half-Life, so I can't Man. relate. Half-Life... You're still Red Idol. I know, oh, that's fine, I'm, that's not Red Alert, I'm just set, I'm set on some sort of Soho setting, or okay. whatever it is. Um, but... Brothel. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah, 
start dancing in a minute. But no, no, it starts oh, like so. Half Half Life, so... like you, it kind of Half Life is one of those games you had to be there in the moment. Like Half Life One, you probably play it now and go, well, "What's so special about this?" But without realizing, it was one of the most unique games at the time. No one did yeah. first person shoot intro. Oh yeah, no, like didn't that. it like invent crouch jumping and various other yeah, things yeah. and uh, incredible AI pro? I've heard it's an incredible oh, like for the time. Uh, technical absolutely, like no, yeah. no, like your previous benchmark was Quake Two, where you just run and gun. This was like talking to characters, you know, wandering around, interacting with the environment. And then Half Life Two came out. And was also groundbreaking because it had the physics first game to do physics stuff the gravity like, gun was gravity so gun and the storyline cool. was amazing like you were shooting up at massive freaking striders and they advanced it all and it was a really really well thought out environment and people just want more of that but i think they found you know the the, the, the hype to try and do a half-life 3 or half-life episode 3 was too much and no one's been able to kind of think of where we can go from there when you ask what kind of game you would like to see lower decks i was trying to run through the list of like every genre ever one of the things I thought about would be a puzzle kind of platformer, either first person yeah. or you can do side scrolling if you really yeah. wanted. Side scrolling would probably be too limited, but I don't know. I don't know how that really works into Star Trek because there was that I, awful Star Trek DS Nine game. I was game. just about to mention that. I want to stream that <laughs> at some oh. point. It's so bad. <laughs> but it's so no. Don't yeah, do it's this. Nice. It's a waste of a stream. Cool, but yeah. No, we should stream it. It's a for a Super Nintendo <laughs> game. Come on, it's all right. You can stream on your own. I ain't doing that. We'll bump our motto. We'll do it on Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> I still need to do more Harbinger. You guys did. Wanna... Did you guys? Because I did that. I'll solo do Harbinger. Stream. Harbinger is hilarious. I was watching that. That's oh, good. Yeah. Harbinger's great. I kind of really want to play more of that because it's like it's a DS9 game that's really DS9. Like all the crew have been evacuated, which is you know because of an ion storm, and it's just you and there just because they couldn't afford to have people on the you know. The conversation with Quark was easily my favorite part of it. That was really fun. Yeah. <laughs> you you went up to Ops for one of your missions, and it took us like six minutes to find out who, which guy you're supposed to talk to. Yeah, just I couldn't work out the controls. Like you had to have the mouse in the top left corner to be able to turn a certain way. Yeah, it wasn't very intuitive, but it's, it was fun. I'm doing an investigation with Odo. It's like, you tickle the right button. They're all voice acted as well, apart from uh, a few people who couldn't make it. There's no Miles O'Brien. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll call me. You can't afford him. Mm. He's too busy uh, being. What was that? What, he was being in Die Hard Two or something. Whatever. I think was one of the episodes he missed out on. Was he that? did a good O'Brien on the charity stream. By the way, is that oh, your thank... oh. heritage <laughs> bubbling to the surface? Uh, a little bit. Um, because I think you did uh, mention me by name. I am of slight Irish descent. Um. Uh. Despite being a dirty, filthy colonizer, um, his name is Stars yeah. of Clarity. <laughs> oh, God, don't even, don't, don't do this. Um, hey, if Idol can do a Southern accent, I can do whatever the hell kind he of. Didn't do a Southern accent. He did something else entirely. I don't know what the fuck that was. I'll have you know, I do a flawless Southern accent in my car. <laughs> in your car. Yeah, when I'm driving home from work, it's outstanding performance anxiety i did a whole i did a whole thing for a while where you know i was always told in my family that we was irish and they said this is where we come from because my great great grandfather used to walk about a bit and have several families all over the place he was a bit of a <laughs> bit, bit of a hustle. oh there's a story i've got a whole story about it but actually it turns out no he's not he's polish <laughs> so there you are <laughs> he just traveled to ireland once no seriously that's the whole family were just like i did i did the whole ancestry thing the whole family was like oh no we've got irish heritage got irish family and they sort of went through the dream and Oh no no! He came from a ship from Poland in 1892, and he's there. He is. <laughs> I've got the records. He even went over to America and slept with some women over there, and fostered another family, and then came back on the onion boat from Boston. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> my, heritage is, my heritage is Polish too on my dad's side. We thought it was German for the longest time, and then it turns out it's Polish. Oh, so. there you go. Is this the part where we find out you two are secretly related? <laughs> um, Any shoemakers in your gonna... family? That's going to complicate our <laughs> our secret uh, plans to get married and live together. Sorry, I don't. Nah, well. <laughs> One can dream. <laughs> Better to have loved and lost. Yes. I've only lost. I was just like, I'm going to duck out of this one. <laughs> <laughs> I need to leave. That's why I've got the red lights on, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe I'll change that now. I'll just change it. <laughs> Let's go Savannah. Incidentally, uh, Idol, this is your reminder that we still need to do an acting thing. We Ooh. still owe them for the uh, the do charity we? stream stuff. What do we owe them? We do. For? I think we hit. Uh, it was a twenty-four hundred or twenty-five hundred. Okay. Was the goal we had to hit? We'll do that. We We've already got no money. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Shout, no, we'll do it. We'll do it on Wednesday. Should we do it on Wednesday, you and me? Yeah, you know what? Let's what do you want to do tonight? Uh, Idol, Should we do it tonight? Uh, what are we doing? 
Well, I don't know what the scene would be, so let, maybe we'll ask the. Let's, uh, let's, save, let's save that tweet for Wednesday. <laughs> okay. Right, we we'll can actually be Wednesday. prepared. Yeah. <laughs> and for a coherent stream where we aren't, like, Ben bombed off the yeah, stream. Uh, ben bombed, and then me trying to talk about squid. <laughs> All right, what is what is bubble and squeak? Fried mashed potato. Uh, that one I don't know. Either. Oh, is that it's just it fried is? mashed okay. potato and onions and stuff. It's sort of like just a hash kind of thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Why is it called bubble and squeak? I don't know. Fucking idea. It's basically Why is bangers. anything in Britain called what it is? <laughs> yeah, I I figured out bangers and mash, but bubble and squeak. Oh yeah, bangers and sausage and mash. Yeah. Well, I still don't British... understand why hash brown is called what it's ha hash brown. Well, hash is like it's supposed to be like it's like the mix of like potatoes and like meats and things like that. You call it like a fried hash. So a hash brown is essentially a mix of potatoes and onions that you fry up. So and it's oh, like you fry brown. Oh right. Okay. There you go. I'm relying on your, on your provincial <laughs> wisdom here. <laughs> I'm relying on your provincial wisdom. I'm a I'm a city folk. You Would know. Would you like to know what a scallop is? It's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's a British thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just had to check. There's <sighs> something on the table called carrot cream. Is I'm that, trying to figure out if it's like... like lotion or if it's actual carrot cream. Is that something redheads do? I don't <laughs> want to think about this conversation. I've never uh. been more disappointed in it. <laughs> Sorry. Nature Rich Daily Moisturizer. Okay, it's not edible. Oh. I don't think. Oh god, right. My disappointment Stars, is immeasurable and my day is ruined. Stars, you'll know this. There is a there is a shop you in the UK. You should feel so bad for that I one. Feel I feel so terrible. No, I actually don't. <laughs> There's a shop in the UK called Lush. You'll know this, won't you, Stars? Have you ever been uh, in Lush? Yeah. Doesn't all of course. the things they sell in Lush look edible? But it's soap. But it just they they do things that looks like a really nice it looks like a really nice it looks like a really nice dessert. Or it's like this is like some exquisite chocolate chocolate gateau or whatever, and you just pick it up and go, Oh wait, no, this is I rubbed my you can't eat this. <laughs> but it smells horrible, you, it looks yeah. delicious. Is is that your admission that you've tried to eat some? No. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I'm sure you could find some that have, like, kids' teeth marks in them, if you, you know? If you've never, oh, almost certainly. If you've never tasted soap, you've never been to prison. That's all I'll say. Cool, my oh, second off-color joke of the night. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> you stealing my material? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> that, that is a Stars and Gardens joke. Oh, there we go. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. No, yeah, actually, no, Lush, Lush is well renowned as the shop where you walk past it and you get a headache from the sudden rush of incredibly oh, the, strong the, scents. Go in the go in the wife and someone automatically comes up. Would you like to find out about our orga organic oatmeal? I'm just like, yes. What flavor? And they're like, well, you don't eat it. And I'm like, well, what do you do? It's oatmeal. What do you do? You put your fingers in, it exfoliates you, and I'm just like. I go away. I don't want to be here. I'm trying. Where's the dad chair? Where's the chair I sit down while she looks at things I'm not supposed to see? Like, come on. <laughs> Just waiting for them to be like, look, this is like our, our citric acid bowl. What do you want us to do? Oh, it degloves you. It degloves <laughs> your hand. <laughs> it's very it you down to your, Yes, it takes you down to your essential fibers. <laughs> <laughs> You just get to sit in the primordial ooze for a bit. It's very relaxing. Okay, what if this is actually early transporter technology and we should be funding this? No, no, it's it, going to turn into Genesis it from, from Star Trek, isn't it? It's like we're going to revert to like like spider people and mermaids or whatever it was that happened we in We just got to figure out how to put us back together after we're exfoliated. <laughs> Okay, I've got a question for you guys. We need racing liners back on to tell us like <laughs> the finer things in life. It's true. So, what do you think is the Star Trek episode with the most egregious shut up, that's not how science works it's gotta moment? It's got to be Genesis. It's got to be Genesis. Threshold? Dude, there's so oh, many. Yeah, Threshold 2. There's so, so many. Because there's a lot. Like, uh, you know what? I'll give it credit. Like, Discovery is like okay. my C little network shit is bull is bull is bullshit. Yeah, that yeah, that, yeah. that ain't real. There are but mushrooms in you know, that, 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 I've looked in the science. It's like some of this is credible. It's like okay, yeah, it's still science fiction, mm. but it's still okay. like I don't look at it and I immediately go bullshit like I do in Genesis or Threshold. What about what about the episode where they ride? They basically surf the Soliton wave through space. Dude, I love that. One. I just watched it. It's that a great one episode, recently. but. Scientifically, not. Yeah. Is that the one with Alexander? Yeah. Oh, is it? 
I think so. So there's not a case if they ride the Soliton wave and then like it busts up other systems and they have to space. save the and then they have to save the um the little stick plants, whatever they were. <laughs> oh, that's right, yes. Yeah. In order to accelerate you fast enough for a wave to carry you along at warp speed, like wouldn't that like tear apart the ship in the first split second as it like generates the wave? Ah, inertial dampness. Uh I don't deflected. Think, I don't think <laughs> <laughs> I don't think waves steadily accelerate until they get really fast, do they? Like, whatever movement generates the wave and then it dissipates in energy over time, right? It depends if there's... I the, would think uh, so, yeah. If you can contain the energy and there's enough to sustain it, we're getting some... some. There's probably some quantum physics involved there. Dude, <laughs> well, there's, there's, there's also least... another aspect which doesn't get brought up in Star Trek often enough, radiation. Yes. Like, surely the amount of radiation Shields. generated by a wave to... Yeah, yeah. but... Shields. What can we also talk about? Getting inoculated against radiation damage? Like, what the fuck are you inoculating me against? I think what, there can, should be a few you blunts on the table before we have this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> like, what if like, they wrote a wave the, the, space? The, the, like, dude. <laughs> dude. That's where uh, most like, of the plots come from. Because, like... Phasers shoot nadion energy, which is a form of radiation. Are you telling me that if you inoculate me against radiation, I'm suddenly Im impervious to phase blasts? Is that how that works? So I mean... Walt says anything with transporters is BS. Yes, but in Willy Wonka, they take apart <laughs> EV and they transport them across the top of the, they the and they pull them back down. It's chocolate television. If they can do it, Star Trek chocolate can do it. Chocolate television. Mm. Maybe that should be our term for any science that is just too radical for us to accept. Oh, that's just, just chocolate television. I think that's quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's bullshit chocolate television I'm watching. <laughs> mm. I don't know, man. So There's so much nonsense in Star Trek. And then they produce lower decks, which is like, well, there we go. <laughs> yeah, just lean into it, I suppose. Yeah, exactly. I'm intrigued but, by you know, the, I kinda... yeah. I like the nonsense because it gives people in real life something to shoot for, and how many things have come true well, because yeah, they're I like, mean, we saw it on TV and we wanted to make it happen. <laughs> look, look at like Picard's mm. desk in TNG. He had a shit ton of tablets there, didn't he? Which back then he was like, the future. He has a tablet. It doesn't matter. We're just like, well, you just need, dude. You just need one. Why are you hoarding tablets? Come on. <laughs> I've got a report to be fair, for everyone. If I can... I'm rich. Look at me. <laughs> To be fair, having run a few tabletop games at my time, having loads of tablets with one screen open at one time would be really useful. Mm. <laughs> so maybe I, maybe I can relate to that. Mm. So I'm still trying to think of other bullshit like Star Trek science ones. Cause I'm, Voyager oh, must be oh, full oh. of them. Meridian. The planet that can disappear. Oh, the planet that goes out of phase. Yeah. Yeah. And they all survive. Suddenly, you know, they don't turn into... Like, TOS, at least if people went through a different dimension, they turned into salt. But... Uh, <laughs> 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 well, they turned into a weird cube. Like, Uhura. Here is Uhura. Okay, I got it. The most bullshit um, I think in... I know what this is going to be. It's it's how often oh, no, it's not. Uh, robots can be overcome by human emotion, especially mm. Kirk's romance in them. Mm, like if you if you tried to kiss your laptop screen right now, you know, would that affect it in any way? No, but of course in Star Trek it does. So listen, I've had my laptop a long time. We've got a bond. <laughs> it's real, man. <laughs> okay, Dude, no, it has seen one, things I've it does not want to see. <laughs> I've got one better, and and this is so. Remember the TOS episode where Nomad wipes Uhura's brain, and then just by the end yes. of the episode, she's just relearning it all, and then she's fine by the next episode. Uh, yeah, and her personality is the same as it was before. Yeah, that's wipes her brain, she like... becomes a vegetable, and they just teach her everything, and then you know that, this is essentially Uhura has felt... died, and this is a different Uhura. I don't bring this up often, but that one felt. Uh pretty thinly veiledly racist to me mm. like because they, yeah. they picked the one black person on the cast Could and then they have chapel. her relearn yeah. like like saying basic words and stuff i'm like uh you know it's it's, it's yeah. plausible sci-fi but could you have picked maybe someone else mm. Mm. yeah you're not wrong actually i didn't even consider the racial aspect but that is a little bit uh spurious oh, yeah. uh, I watching that it's just like this what you did that okay <laughs> I mean, dude, cool. if, if they would have given it to Kirk or something, you know, that would have been freaking hilarious to, to watch him try to... Oh, no, the amount of times Kirk's lost his memories and then had to rediscover them. There's 
there's got to be a, at least two or three times. I uh, there's the one where the uh, the, the native people where he falls yeah. in love with what Mirmini. That's one. He just goes outside, hugs uh, himself because he loves himself in the mountains. <laughs> That's where he loves more, the mountain. But... That's where he got it from. From his experiences with Go him. climb a rock. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get that cook in the game? I'd love a go Hell climb yeah. a rock. Bob? I like the are one. you there, Bob? <laughs> you brought it up a couple streams ago, the deadly <coughs> years, where they're all getting older. Mm. And Kirk's ego is so massive, it won't let him believe that he's at all faltering. And it's so funny... He starts using like uh, old person lingo, and he's like, "I'm as I'm as sharp as I ever was," and he's like, his hand is shaking and stuff. That's a good one. He he really does act well in that one. But they did that with Chakotay and Neelix, didn't they? In, in the voyage over there, it's like, "Well, my, I'm so old, I can fall down the stairs." You know, <laughs> how old are you? It's the date that is. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, not the Joe Pistopo. No, you know what? That's the most bullshit moment in Star Trek. The idea that Joe Pistopo was ever funny. <laughs> to be fair, the only time I've ever seen him is in that episode. That's the only time I know. Yeah, yeah. There's a reason. Actually, for no, that. He, he wasn't even funny in the episode because even Guinan didn't like him. <laughs> yeah, no. Do you think that there's someone was like, "Oh, we'll get a comedian. We'll get a comedian. All right." <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg's so, just like, "I'm right here, man. <laughs> I've done stand. I'm, come on. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a comedian. Yeah. Like, come on." Well, so who's your who's favorite ghost, motherfucker? Who's your favorite contemporary actor or or figure or whatever brought into Star Trek? Because most of them don't age so well. Hmm. But I... are we talking? Like, what do you mean, like focus, an example? Focus of an episode so, or so just like, a bit? No, just anyone, anyone from real life who made it in the trek. For me, it's probably Stephen Hawking. I was going to say that. Yeah. This before. that like, was always cool. He, yeah, he he's larger than life enough that it will still probably age well. Yeah, like it's better than his contribution to science has always been. Yeah, it, it, that's rock solid. The Elon Musk stuff in Discovery aged badly instantly. Instantly, only, yeah, only so because, bad. Only because of Elon, really. But the the way I think about that is all the big Elon scientists. It, it, well, yeah, all, all the big scientists were eccentric and did stupid things. It's just Elon Musk at the moment has got Twitter to, to, to spout himself. He's got a more public voice. Guaranteed Isaac Newton was as much of a dick as probably Elon Musk is, but doesn't deny the contribution. So I would probably say probably still sticks if you take out the personality, maybe. Iggy Pop is a strong pick. Iggy Pop is yeah. good because he was a really he was really good in the role as well. Like Yelgren is funny. He's mm. well acted. So mm. I I don't know any I don't know almost all of his music so I didn't even know who it was the first time I watched it but I'm he, he just seemed like like a, a unique actor and I liked it so when I found out later I'm like oh well that's cool then yeah. he did a good job he more rock stars Chad is calling you out Chad's calling you out for not picking May Jemison yeah that was on the tip of my tip of my tongue but I was as well as asking is it going to be a minor actor no no big, 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 big respect and if you it's like too obvious too there obvious. is there is actually I made me very excited but in one of the latest episodes Picard there is a May Jemison uh, callback so very slight but it's there and I was very happy with that uh, I'm trying to think of other ones that popped up. Um, contemporary actors. Uh, There's not been too many. Sonny Clemens, there you go. <laughs> the neutral zone. Uh, Dude, I, actually it, really, yeah. I, I actually really like the can see that episode because they cool. do dabble in cryogenics, but this is like, what if normal people had access to it? I like the business you know. guy who comes out like, well, what about my stocks? And what about all these investments I made? I could buy this yeah. shit from you, Captain. I like that. And he's quite cool. Yeah, I, I think it doesn't quite work in the end because it's like he has to tell Picard basic, like, brinksmanship against Romulans. Like, mate, mm. mate, I'm sure he must understand that. Um, but I think the rest of the episode does work quite well, where it's like, yeah. that work, it's much more, at the same time, it's more obvious than the Ferengi, but it's also more honest. Like, the Ferengi is like, yeah. if you're going to critique capitalism, just fucking do it. Like, no one's <laughs> going to, like, take a pop at you for doing it. But, like, cloaking it up with, like, really awkward, like, crotch goblins is not the way to do it. Crotch like, goblins. <laughs> wow. Tell me that's not no. what your human appearance is once again, shock us. Okay, like, my whip. <laughs> <laughs> well, they wanted to make, they wanted to make them the Klingons of TNG. Yeah. So... That's why I don't they... know how they ever thought that was going to work. 90s, man. Not under the 80s, the 80s, that was. Yeah, 1987, yeah. 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 Dude, episode, episode 2 tells you all you need to know about what mm. they thought they could get away with. 
Hang on, hang on. Where is it? Damn it! There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Can you cut the part where she goes, "Oh, Captain"? <laughs> I just wanted, I just wanted the noises. Oh, okay. Beverly, Fifty Shades of Beverly Howard. Uh, I mean, she was reading a particularly erotic chapter from a grandmother's journal. Yeah, it's always been that. I posted a link in, in our Discord the other day. It was like, um, the entirety of any time two female characters interacted oh, in yeah. the Lord of the Rings trilogy. And it was like a three-second clip. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that, that's sort of... The stuff we get from Troy and Crusher sometimes is good, but then sometimes it's like, well... Mm. Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to get another beer. I'll be back. <laughs> get another beer. Get, get, get bladded. Um, yeah, no, I think probably like Stephen Hawking's probably the best one. That one's the most tasteful. It makes the most sense. And I've heard like there's a, uh, there's a, a bit of on-the-nose one in Discovery Season 4, but that's not... I haven't seen that yet, so. Hmm. All right. Sorry, we're, we're feeding the girls, and it's very involved discussion. That's fair. That's fair. You, you, the kiddies need their food. Okay. Favorite Star Trek pet? Hmm. Okay. Are you enjoying your cameo? Spot. Yeah. Spot. Yeah. Spot's a strong pick. This Spot. is up. This is bad. This is down. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> Only because of I oh know I I love I love the interaction when he ha he hands Spot over to Worf. It's like tell him he's a nice kitty. I will feed him. <laughs> tell him he's a good. It's quite funny because in in the obviously now non-canon books, um, when Data dies, Worf inherits Spot, and, yeah. and like because Worf and, and speaks about it in some of the books, like because he takes him back over to the Enterprise when he goes and serves. And he's just like, yes, Spot is a worthy pet. <laughs> he sort of says, like, he's an honourable cat who was earned my respect many times over. <laughs> yeah, because I think that follows on from that deleted scene from Nemesis, I believe. Oh, was there? Was there one from... Oh, you haven't seen that? I've... The only deleted scene I've seen from Nemesis is Picard and Data talking over the wine, which is should have been in the film. Oh, there's a few other ones that are actually oh. interesting. Um... For one, there's an extended scene of uh, Picard and Crusher talking about his Academy days, and oh, wow. you get more about like Cadet Picard and like, the whole thing with Tom Hardy. I think it's an extended scene on that. Um, you get the scene with um, Commander Madden, I think his name is. Oh, like, oh no, the guy I've seen that one by... with the seatbelts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah that's one. the one. Um, and then there's another what one where Geordie... About? Uh, deleted scenes from Nemesis, oh. which are actually probably the best parts of it, which is obviously why they had to be cut. Um, and then the other one, which I remember, is uh, Geordi and Worf go through Data's effects, and I believe that's where Spot uh, decides okay. she's going to live with Worf now. So that's uh, why they canonized that in the book. Yeah, that makes sense. That's quite cool. It's a shame that like Nemesis missed those moments where the t the crew interact like they did oh, the in TNG. Yeah. yeah, that's what they need. But then we had insurrection, so it was fine. I think we're speculating. It might have even been on the show this last Wednesday, talking about Strange New Worlds, and uh, I, they're pretty obviously going to focus heavily on Scott Becky Peck. No, um, <laughs> Pike and <laughs> Pike and Spock. Yeah. I think we're yeah. trying to figure out would they would they add a third one in there to get the the classic sort of triangle of mm. of interaction. Uh, number and, one, and, Una. I'll put Una in on that yeah. one. I think. They could, um, well, they could. They're going to have to open up her personality and backstory quite a lot. Oh, they will. I think mm. that'll, that'll be her time to shine. Um, interestingly, uh, people may have seen the news that they introduced Spock and Mabenga's first names. Uh, apparently that was a mistake. That wasn't supposed to be on the promotional artwork. Apparently they will have first names, but... Does uh, Spock need a first name? Apparently it's like Chigun, Chigun. Oh, we've got big on <laughs> oh, the <laughs> Mr. Downtown. Yeah, and I I didn't I didn't check and see if this was gonna work or not. I just decided to dive in. We're we're on the road. On the road again. If I could dive in for a few more minutes, I thought I would. Fantastic. Where's where's Mrs. Big? Can we get a cameo? Oh gotta be careful. I can I'll get be careful uh, now. Get, <laughs> as as 
<laughs> he used up all his husband credit just on that little tease. She yep. gave him the look. Amazing. <laughs> no, not the look. Well, we've just been sitting here in um, silence until you—you you were the heart of the conversation. Like we, we, we've just been nothing since he since he left. <laughs> oh, well, geez. What were we just talking about? I forget now. Spot, the spot, the spot and wolf. What's we your get, favorite? How, what's your how many bottles of beer are on the wall? Wait, I'm sorry. What was the question? What's your favorite Star Trek oh. pet? Favorite Star Trek pet? Oh, it's Spot, and it's not close. Thank you. There you go. Yeah. Validation. There you go. Yeah, I mean, well, just because no, no, none of the other pets. I mean, yes, I guess uh, Porthos was involved in plots here and there, but it just, I. I don't think Porthos added anything to Archer as a character the way that mm. Spot added to Data as a character. Yeah, that's true. So, I, I think that's uh, true. Porthos is the character that Archer was nicest to. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. That, that is certainly yeah, but did, did that Archer ever say. construct a Did Archer ever construct a 24-line poem in iambic pentameter? To Porthos, That's so good. I think that would have I'm made sure this character more interesting if he not. had. I tell you what, there is a really good. Yeah. Um, there's a uh, there's, there's sort of strange. There's a a set of Star Trek short story uh, compilations. They're called Strange New Worlds. This is obviously back in the nineties, long long time ago. And they're loads of short stories written by various Star Trek authors. One of them, and I forget the name of it, and it's something like 0.13 seconds in Data's mind before the ship explodes. And it goes through basically what is happening in Data's brain as the, there's something going on with a warp core. I, f I find the name in it, and it's a really good read. Uh, I have to find it. Fine. Welcome to Google Talks. Welcome, welcome. I'm um, just googling. Shit. Please talk. <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're strange new worlds. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're going to position number one in that sort of that third spot. Um, oh, which is going to be interesting because so far it's called what what went through Data's mind 0.68 seconds before the satellite hit, and it's a really good read. It's a really good one. Um. Yeah, because um, number one and the Spock seem very similar personality-wise, so I'm not quite sure how they're going to play that yeah, out. Yeah, they did. I think I don't know if they're playing her a bit more as sort of like uh, arrogant maternal figurehead, a little bit. Sort of going to have the sort of the officer-like quality, I mean, but McCoy was always so cranky they could just make her the cranky one if they wanted to. Yeah, I'm, I'm really wouldn't intrigued. mind that. I'm really intrigued. Do, they're going to give Spock full emotions, and that's how he's going to develop as a character. <laughs> Oh, here, here's the thing as well. well I mean, they're we... already, you know, the thing, the thing. With... I was just gonna say the thing with the name now, where they're. They oh well, they've backtracked kind of on that. Haven't they? they backtracked and said, "Oh no, no, he's not there. He's not." The thing is, I always thought Mabenga's name was Jabilo because I've read that in so many different places before. So I wondered, but apparently they've said, "Well, no, it's a mistake. It's not going to be there." But I forgot yeah. what I was going to say. Oh yes, that was it. The interesting thing about Spock is it is actually seven or eight years before his before a mock time. So the scenes we see on Vulcan could be the Ponfar cycle. So we could see a mock time 0 0.5, as it were. I just bow, want new bow, stories, bow, man. Bow, bow. We see we seem to bring to bring us in. Young Give to bring. us something new. To bring. We've made that joke oh, when she came out. Eternal. <laughs> yeah. I said, to bring. Oh, I think you did a little bit of yes. Thank you. Thank you. All. I can always rely on you. There I am. Not long now till Strange New Worlds. Did you see the trailer? Did you see the full trailer? The one that was released mm. recently. Was good. And all the little character ones. You've not seen anything. Some interesting stuff. I've kind of we've been talking around a little bit as well about um, doing like a history of Star Trek thing, talking about going back to the, the sort of like early days of the fifties and cut the you know the eugenics wars and things like that. And I've said like no, we need to put it on hold because Picard's going through some of that stuff, and definitely with the introduction of Lan Nudi and Singh, um, yeah, they might suddenly just kind of go, this is when it took place, or this is what happened. And I, I wonder if we're going to get a bit more exposition on those early events that we know very little about. Knew shockingly little about. So, Idol, where does your history of Star Trek begin? Does it begin with um, the USS Voyager being thrown back to the Big Bang? 
Is that where it starts? <laughs> no, I've kind of always taken it. Oh, bye, Vic. <laughs> I think he arrived. Uh, I've always taken it from the one, the one, because I've, I've got a document. If anyone's. Milady, I have arrived. <laughs> 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 only uh, on the chill stream. Yeah. Um, it's the only place I'm allowed. What was I saying? Uh, yeah, no. So, so, so the document that I produced, which I can show you anyway, it's called the Eras of Star Trek Universe. It's, it's always done from a Earth perspective. So it's done from like the major events of how Earth uh, and the Federation sort of went through. So I'm not obviously I'm not going back to the Big Bang. I'm not going back to like Vulcan uh, oh, and things so like that. In which case, it starts with Q and Picard looking at the soup. Gotcha. <laughs> it doesn't. No, it it doesn't. I I don't. I'm trying should. to go through. Yeah, it should. Yeah, I'm going through major events. It starts with. Scientists in the 1950s construct... I'll bring the document up. Scientists in the 1950s construct the augments, which is where I theorised is where the major timeline split between events that happen in, in reality and events where the Star Trek universe splits off. And I'm thinking that's the mm. major divergence. Something changed post-World War II where either eugenics wasn't banned entirely or someone went rogue and created the eugenics, which plays a little bit into Picard season two and I won't spoil, but there is there is a little bit in Well there. Yeah, you you um, can it was never banned because it's more of a theory yeah. than anything else. But so I, I think it's more yet. just from from what from what we know, from what is what I've dig, dug up on various sites in memory alpha and whatever, like between nineteen fifty and nineteen sixty, scientists begin working on augmented humans that will eventually lead to the creation of Khan, Nooni and Singh. And that is that is the moment where we can establish obviously there were time travelers but they didn't you know people that went into past further back didn't change the timeline to any significant degree but this this happened at a certain point oh was, we're gonna have, to have a conversation about no, that no, this is it this is what i want to do i want us to sit and have a conversation about the, but we need to we need to wait because i think there's going to be some more information that that came out because I, i'm trying to think about other temporal events things that could have changed and there's nothing particularly that changed City on the Edge of Forever they went back and corrected what the change was I think in Picard season 2 they will correct what the change was obviously um, so they're not going to be detrimental effects but there is definitely a line that the, 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 the theory is that the, the effects of the eugenic wars and then the subsequent World War 3 set in, set in motion the creation of the Federation with the standards and the ethics and the, 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 the drive to be as morally right as it is because of the past effects of the eugenic wars in World War Three and the atrocities that occurred in there. Clearly, Mistral set it all in motion. <laughs> oh yes, and actually, actually, that's the one I didn't think of, Mistral. So I, th I threw an image in because he's stayed there. He stayed there. He did, didn't he? Actually, maybe we'll look I threw an it. image in show chair. You can bring that up if you want. Let me. Have Walt it. pointed out that uh, Stella Rice captured that when Ooh. she was um, earlier today, and she's at uh, Mission Chicago. So. So There's a neat little timeline of the universe, mm, or the, the Trek universe, and it does start with the Big Bang and, uh, and Death Wish. Oh, gosh. So. <laughs> Death Wish, fantastic! Oh, it does, doesn't it? Hopefully, someone will get us a, a good <laughs> big bold line: Star Trek <laughs> Enterprise, and then and everything else. Maximum <laughs> magnification. <laughs> But yeah, uh, tomorrow's yesterday's on there as well. Like that, sitting the edge of forever. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> a death wish. Yeah, all our yesterday. So I'm, I'm trying to think. Did they ever, apart from Stormfront, did they ever actually go back to the 1940s in Star Trek? St what was the res this is the thing I've struggled because I've watched Stormfront in a lot of years. What was the resolution to that? They basically undid everything the Nakul did, didn't they? Yes, everything yeah, was completely because that fine, went off to into a completely different timeline. Because that that was one when I was constructing the idea of like producing this sort of like, this show where we talk about the timeline changes or things like what might have influenced it was like what did the Nakal do? But I think yeah, that that got resolved. Yeah, and then and then Archer told Daniels to fuck off. Um, yes. So ha I repeat, have they ever gone back to the nineteen forties apart from then? In all of Star Trek, have they when, ever when, gone back when, to the When Kira, no, uh, no, 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 no O'Brien were jumping about, where did they jump to? They jumped to like 1960s. the 1960s. 20s and the 60s or something like that? Was just they, the jumped, yeah. they jumped to different periods because the whole conceit yeah. was we have to find out which time period they went yeah. to. So. I've just I've just put my document in the chat, guys, if you want to have a look. It's, it has got spoilers, bear in mind, for uh, Discovery and Picard. So I showed you my document. Please yeah. respond. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't do this. to dog pics. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so go, go have a look. Uh, bear, yeah, bear in mind spoilers all around. I keep that very, I keep it up to date as much as I can. But uh, I try and keep all right, most boys. of the things. But yeah, I'm gonna have to tap out too because I had an agreement to keep it under two hours. So 
Oh Jesus Fair Christ! Enough. Yeah, Ready look at the time. Time. Would you look at the time? We've just That's fly, doesn't That's it? good. Well, Ben did hijack a lot. I, of it. I'm gonna go back tomorrow. Yeah, I'm gonna go back tomorrow and watch. Yeah, that I'll, and I'm gonna clip it tonight. I'll get, I'll get I that up. Pull out of there. Yeah, I'll get that up tonight cool. on on somewhere, and I'll put it on YouTube, and I'll, I'll link it around. But um, yeah, we'll do, I'll do I'll do that in a minute. But um, yeah, it's been fun. This has been a very timeline centric uh, show. <laughs> Well, we're not doing timelines this week, so we have food. to catch up. So there we have to do a modern. Now you can't get out of it. No, I can't get out. It's fine. I've got it out of my system now. We've done lower decks. We've done the the, the mm -hmm. flea I'm fine. I'm, I'm happy. We explained it and all that jazz. Well, everyone, um, please join us on Wednesday for Star Trek Armada and the following week for Timelines Talks number sixty nine. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> With uh... yes. Equal sign, lowercase letter J, equal sign, cold, uh, who will be making his first appearance on one of our regular shows. He's yes. been on charity streams before and done some pack pulling in Discord, but it's going to be yeah. nice to have him on and add to the UK-centric nature of our show. And we will be having a, an appropriate Timelines Talks <laughs> original segment for episode 69. You better believe oh, it. It's gonna, dude. I've been waiting on this on this <laughs> wordplay pun for like two months. It's gonna be hilarious. Nice, cool. All right. It's not gonna land. That's the saddest thing. And what's you look at and go? It's just the oh. music's giving up. <laughs> yeah, it's very slow and every, every now and then I'm just gonna be the like going, mm, Yeah. <laughs> And if anyone wants to clip that, you can uh, mail me ten pounds in the in the post, and I will let you do that. Okay, let's let's end this, guys. We'll see you on Wednesday. Ta-ra!